Hey! What's up, everybody? Good evening. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I hope you're all pumped up like those kicks after after hearing this very powerful music. Uh, I'm here joined uh, by my lovely wife, and we're going to be reading more of this terrible, terrible book! Okay? Uh, we're up to chapter four. I, I actually got very upset when I saw that we only got up to chapter four. Um, this is like a third of the way through. <laughs> I wish we were closer to the end. This is this is very this is gonna be a very painful stream, okay? Um let me let me bring you to this screen now, okay? Uh, where I made a custom image of all the friends we've met along the way so far. Okay. <laughs> I think this is a more uh this is a more detailed uh Depiction. Dep yeah, depiction <laughs> of what the cover of the book should be. It. I think everyone's here. Um, we just don't have the. I couldn't think of, of what we would do uh, to include the the female character. I already forgot her name. The the female Indiana Jones. Uh, that's true. The pirate's dick isn't out. It's almost accurate, but you know, I have to. Unfortunately, these bureaucrats over at Twitch uh, want me to be within the bounds of of ethics and not showing nudity. Um. But we're going to be reading through this. Hopefully we get through this whole mess. We're going to be switching off every two pages to try to get through this together. And we're also going to be taking half shots of quote-unquote alcohol uh, for every semicolon. But we have a rule, okay? Um, if, the, if the semicolons exceed five in the first chapter that we read, we're changing that rule to descriptions that include disgusting or ugly. Then we will take a half shot because if there are five semicolons per chapter minimum, even that is too much to get through this. And I'm going to be completely trashed by the end of this and I'm not going to be able to finish it. There's no way in hell. Well, I, I couldn't get through four chapters of this without feeling tipsy. Okay. I drank almost an entire bottle of, of Jim Beam uh, apple whiskey or apple bourbon. Okay. I could, I couldn't, I can't do it. I can't do it. And I got to play C uh, Civilization V with some friends later. So I can't. I can't do it. I've got other responsibilities. Okay. Let mm -hmm. me put us let, let me put us up here. We actually are joined by another uh, creature on, on the chair. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. Hello. Here we are. The two of us. You can't see Yuki, but he's in the lap. <laughs> he's over here. He's joined by us. Uh, we're going to be your readers tonight. Um... We're going to be reading this wonderful story. Let me show you, uh, if you haven't seen it already, The Escapades of Augie Atwell, uh, uh, written, and <laughs> written and illustrated by the lovely L.N. Price, one of the, the greatest authors of our time. Okay? Yes, this is Mrs. Sleeps, the, the artist. <laughs> the lovely, the, who, who created better fan art that exists <laughs> in this book in a matter of minutes. <laughs> uh all right so we're gonna be switching off every every two pages uh, i got two pages right here i got like one and a half pages so uh no we'll do it that way you'll you, you know every two pages can you agree to that okay and a, and a shot every or a half shot every semicolon both of us so both of us are gonna have uh not a, not a great night tonight if this is bad enough <laughs> yuki's joining us but he's actually behaved hopefully you won't hear him howl today he's in my lap. that's true he jumped right up he, he knows who his mom is Okay, uh, if you haven't, if you're new to this and you haven't seen the first part of this, uh, I would suggest watching it because you're not going to know what's going on. This is a very cohesive story with a lot of twists and turns. Every character matters, especially the ones uh, that are introduced in the beginning and you'll never see again. Uh, no, you could actually just jump right in. I'll give you a synopsis right now. You ready? Here are the cliff notes. Uh, we have a main character by the name of Augie Atwell who lives in Australia he hates everything. He's scared of everything. Um, he hates his apartment with green walls, especially. And he gets roped in with a lemur who looks like Abu from Aladdin. <laughs> and he takes him over to a magical land named Rumble Twaza. Uh, he ends up on a pirate ship with a bunch of pirates with their dicks out. This is, this is what happens. Um, and a princess who's dressed like Indiana Jones. And... Uh, the, the, a witch is after them by the name of Zelna. Okay. What else happens? <laughs> I don't remember what else happens. The pirates. Uh, the, oh, 
Oh, the elephant chasing the um. There was an elephant. Yeah. How do you remember this? The witch turned into an elephant and chased him on a boat. Uh, or that's okay. Yeah. The, was it an elephant? She turned into an elephant. I drew oh, it. She has a better memory than me. I, oh, that's I, right. You did draw I, it. I, I you did draw it. it. You drew an elephant with a witch's hat. That's right. She did. <laughs> Uh, yeah, an elephant chased a pirate ship, which I think the pirate ship would win in that instance. I, I, I don't think an elephant is that big, but hey, you know, this is her story. It could be a fantastical elephant. You never know. Um, but to get you caught up, I don't know, we had some sort of background that, uh, some, some magical people, he, that our main character was born on this island in a hut with a window. <laughs> it had windows in it, but it was made of straw. Um... That's all I remember, and I, uh, the witch is his grandmother. Is that true? I don't know. It's, it's in, all speculation. It's, in sense. it's all speculation. I remember they, they were in a hut. They were in a hut were that a had hut. windows in it. Yeah. So that's pretty good. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna start here with chapter four, the monster of Tower Two. So you know, she watched Lord of the Rings, the Two Towers, and she's like, I think I could take this. I can make it my own. Yeah. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Sit down, everybody. Relax. Uh, take a swig of your alcoholic beverage of choice, if you're of age, uh, because you will need it while we go through this. The following morning, I awoke to the feeling of fur tickling my face. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> when I opened my eyes, I saw a golden tail swaying back and forth in front of them uh, and knew right away that Lotus was asleep on top of my head. Lotus! I called his name in an attempt to wake him. Stop it, guys. Can you guess? Can you guess? Hey, my wife, thank you so much for the 21 months. The disgustingly revolting stuff grabbed the streamer by the wrist and yelled, Hey! <laughs> <laughs> you, hey, you could have written this book. You you could be a, a, a co-writer, a ghostwriter. Actually, I wouldn't want that for you. I, I It would be a preferable thing for your name not to be attached to this, but don't waste your time. All right, you could do much better. Uh, after a few seconds passed without a response, I called him once more. Lotus! His feet scurried across my nose. How small are, are his feet? As he rolled over onto his back. Five more minutes, mommy. Were the groggy words were the groggy words that escaped his lips. Do you want to do Lotus's voice when you do your reading, or, or do you not? I don't care. Okay. I'll, I'll just play it by ear. Play, we got, he's you, starting to bite me. He's well, biting you. He, he did a little bite. You, you can't do that. We're we're professionals here. We're doing yeah. a professional stream. <laughs> Uh, I couldn't take this any longer and tore him from off of my head and threw his body <laughs> across the room. He's already he's already thrown this creature again. Do you have to do you have to be so mean? Lotus questioned, struggling to his feet from the other side of the room. I asked you nicely. I gathered to my feet and stretched my arms above my head. Uh, wow, that's a you know he has to show that he was tired and waking up. Within seconds, the door opened and in walks walked Emily. That's her name. I forgot about that. Wearing her old brown overcoat once again. <laughs> she doesn't have any other clothing. She's a princess. She has nothing else. She's just got that old brown overcoat. So essentially, her 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 king father is like the king of the hobos. He's just, you know, he's nothing special. A dime a dozen, if you will. Uh, get to your feet, Augie. You're wasting daylight, Emily ordered. Hurrying to the wardrobe closet and tearing out a pair of brown trousers. Everything's Why? brown. Why is everything brown? A white button-down shirt and a pair of boots. That's kind of a weird combination. Brown trousers, a button-down shirt, and a pair of boots. That doesn't really go together. But then again, uh, this isn't the most well-dressed uh, lady. <laughs> uh, those clothes, I began, are way too big for Lotus. You guys are supposed to laugh at this. This is a joke. Emily didn't find my joke amusing. Oof, I don't think the chat did either. So we're, we're 0 for 2 here. And pushed the clothes into my arms. They're not for Lotus. They're for you. Now get dressed and stop wasting time, she ordered. All right, so you start from right here. And let me know if there's a semicolon. Okay. Do you need your glasses? Yeah. She needs her glasses. Yes. We're both uh, sightly challenged yes. in some capacity. There we go. Wait, it's a... Uh, I'm not wearing this? Yes. Okay. I'm not wearing this, I said, glancing down at the rugged-looking clothes. <laughs> rugged. What? Rugged looking clothes. She has to she has to accentuate that everything is, is <laughs> so shitty. Yeah. Everything's from a secondhand store and has been eaten oh. by 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 all sorts of by moths and everything. Oh my god. Oh my god. Don't argue with me, Augie. Emily had a temper that I hated seeing, and I knew that if I didn't put on the clothes, she was bound to get even madder. 
I completely ignored whatever else she had to say and dressed myself in the garb that she had given me. Did she say garbage? <laughs> garb. Garb. It might as well have been garbage. <laughs> <laughs> she forgot the end of the word. <laughs> <laughs> when I looked into the mirror that was plastered to the door, I realized that she had dressed me ex up exactly like her. White button-down shirt, brown trousers, climbing boots, long, long, comma, brown jacket. and a Long. <laughs> oh, hold on. Let me read yeah, that yeah, for yeah, you. Let, ahead, me, let me read that for you. Okay, guys, listen to this list, okay? Uh, white button-down shirt, brown trousers, climbing boots, long brown jacket <laughs> yeah long, long this is this is quality work long, 12 dollars on amazon everybody and a dark hat that had a white ribbon tied around its center once i stepped out from behind the wardrobe lotus rolled over on the floor laughing hysterically at What's, what I, I at the clothing know. she's wearing the <laughs> same thing why is he mocking her i don't know what's <laughs> what's so funny i growled you're <laughs> You're the wimpiest looking rubble twazian I've ever seen, Lotus chuckled. I rolled my eyes as I approached Emily, who instantly- He says this when a woman is next to him. Yeah. He really, he's just emasculated him. <laughs> who instantly grabbed my jacket and began adjusting the collar. Come on, she mumbled. We're wasting time. Lotus jumped on my shoulder and sat there as I followed Emily. I thought we were headed towards the kitchen to eat breakfast before our journey, but as we passed the dining room and eventually ended up outside- I began to wonder where she was taking me. Emily, I called. Where are you taking us? <laughs> She's, again, again. <laughs> maybe that should be the, the drinking challenge. Every time he he says something, he describes what he's thinking, and then he says it. Ugh. He, she does it every time. Every single time he has any sort of thought. He's like, oh, I'm thinking about this. I'm saying this now. He says the exact same thing that is in his yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. Just don't just say one or the other. There's no reason to, to reiterate it. It's, it's she's trying to get that word. Oh, out. I see a semicolon already. Oh fuck me. Um, Let me get us ready. <laughs> All right, so that's one semicolon. All right, get to get to the semicolon, then I'll, okay. I'll give us our, our spoils here. Emily opened the gate to the palace and motioned to walk. Yeah, motioned me to walk outside. When she closed the gate once more, she got in front of me and began heading towards the woods. I couldn't go in there, semicolon. I was Augie Atwell, the man who was afraid of everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. A salute. Woo! Man, this one hits harder. Tonight we're drinking. Oh. Yeah, I told you. Willisburg. Yukon Jack, baby. This is way worse than Jim Beam Apple. And this is, uh, Twitch, this is iced tea put into a bottle. So don't worry. This is non-alcoholic. This is this is a uh, family friendly uh, Snapple Snapple iced tea, pure leaf iced tea. I'm looking for a sponsor here, guys. Come on, come on. Oh man, I should have gotten some Coke to chase that with. That's that's rough. Woo! Okay. All right. Um. <clears throat> okay. As Emily kept getting farther and farther away, Lotus eventually pulled on the collar of my jacket. Augie, come on. Emily's getting far ahead. We're going to lose her if you don't get walking. Into the woods, I question. <laughs> no, I guess not. <laughs> They're dark and probably infested with poison ivy. Okay, suit yourself, but I'm following her. Lotus jumped off my shoulder and ran into the woods to catch up with Emily. I stood there alone for a few moments, looking around to see if anyone else was close by. I did not want to be left alone, especially when I began to hear the strange sounds coming from behind me. It started out as a chirp, but ended as a loud scream, causing me to run into the woods to find Emily. I ran with my eyes, gazing over my shoulder, making sure that whatever was creating that horrible noise wasn't chasing after me. How much? Uh, just finish that paragraph, and I'll, I'll start this one. Oh, you finished it. I did. Okay. Go ahead. We'll do that. Well, that'll just be the rule. We finished the the par the last paragraph. You know, I can't pay attention to this. I, I'm listening. I, I listen to the words that she's saying, and it just it goes right over. I, I it, this is so fucking boring. This is terrible. I know that he's going into the woods. Um, when I bumped into something hard, I got knocked off my feet and landed on the cold, muddy ground of the woods. When I looked up to see what I had bumped into, I saw Emily staring down at me and with Lotus perched on her shoulder. Is she like an Amazon woman? She seems very strong if she knocked him down. Are you done exploring now? Emily growled. 
There's something out there! I shouted, pointing to where I had just come from. Once again, the horrible sound occurred, and I immediately clung to Emily's jacket. Augie, stop this nonsense, she demanded, pushing me off of her. <laughs> where, where was he? It's, he's clinging her... Oh, oh, he's clinging to her jacket. Uh, <laughs> that's the noise, I cried. At that moment, I witnessed Lotus roll on the ground and begin to laugh once more. I grabbed onto his vest and pulled him up to my height. You should throw him again. You should toss him across. <laughs> uh, what's so funny, I asked. That noise is from the Rommeltoisian beetle. Lotus rolled over onto his back and began laughing. It's so small that it can't even hurt a fly. Uh, I threw Lotus aside and <laughs> he threw him again. And <laughs> Poor and thing. The, the poor thing is, is just abused constantly. Uh, to follow Emily deeper into the woods, I, we, we should have done an art segment where you just you, you draw Lotus with like a black eye and like I, I can do that next time. Yeah, and uh, and like uh, what's it called a sling? Oh like he's just. Co- I want to. I want to. I want to. Okay. And like you know how in cartoons when someone gets punched and they have like that big bubble on their yeah, face. Like yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. want like at the end of this book we should just tally up how many injuries he's taken mm-hmm. and just you draw him with as many injuries as he has oh my god. just as a complete disaster okay. oh my god i threw Lewis aside and continued to uh, continue to follow emily deeper into the woods where are we going emily i questioned a little while it, it, it sucks that he didn't say that he was thinking that as well uh to get a trekker she replied why do we need a trekker what is a trekker so, oh somebody that um someone that goes through the woods like yeah, somebody who would guide you, I guess. In... Do they call them trekkers? Yeah. Just call them. A, just call them a guide. Just call... Uh, Lotus, who was on my shoulder once more, got into my face and pulled on my ear with his paw. Why do we need a trekker? Because we have to go deep into the woods in order to find the ingredients. That's the only way we can. We will be able to make that spell again. Why did she have to include the word trekker so many times? I don't know. It's, she could it's have a lot. just said that some they needed somebody who would be able to guide them, as you said, through yeah. the woods. No, it's it's a trekker. I think she wants to use her own language. No, I think she uses a thesaurus in order the to trekker, find... Trekker is a good word. Let's she, use that a couple yeah. times. And then never again. That's what she does. Uh, let's see. Why can't Emily <laughs> just trek us into the woods, I asked. They mean tracker. Possibly. We you know what? Know. Maybe they do mean tracker. That, that's a that's a that's a good explanation. Yeah, trekker is like a it's person weird. who walks. It's weird. Like they, to to take a trek across somewhere, just yeah. to walk across. Hold on. Let's look at the let's look at the definition of trekker. Let's see if she did look it up. A fan of the U.S. science fiction that's television a program. It's, <laughs> uh, no, Paris. It's a trekker. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a trekker um let's see because we have to go deep into the woods in order to find the ingredients uh no lotus exclaimed emily isn't a great trekker emily turned around and crossed her arms in anger it was quite obvious that lotus had offended her yep see how many times did she use this word she does she takes words that she learns and goes wow that's a great word and then she starts including it many many can you imagine if we had to drink every time trekker came up oh lord jesus Uh, Emily turned around and crossed her arms in anger. It was quite obvious that Lotus had offended her. Who's saying this? We're traveling to Rumbletwaza prison to find Hayward Henderson Rumbletwaza. He's the greatest trekker there is, she assured. So he's in prison, though. He's he's serving time. Twice in one paragraph. Less than a paragraph. As we continue to walk on, I began to wonder why we were going to Rumbletwaza prison to get a trekker. (laughs) All right, hold on, guys. Uh, Let's see. One, two, three... Uh, four, five, six. In there's there's six six instances of the word trekker in a paragraph and a half. In a paragraph and a half in a book. That's pretty good. She, she needs a thesaurus. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could start. I think it just ends here, so you could start the next page if you want. Okay. So we're going to prison now. Uh, where did you end? Uh, right there. Convicts. That's that's a convicts. Sentence. Is it a sentence or did she end in that? She ended there. She, that's her. Oh wow, that's a weird way to start. Convicts. <laughs> Convicts. Uh, I'm a trekker, guys. Yeah. Oh my God, it's here again. What trekker? Uh, tr- twice. So. Oh my lord, we'd be dead. <laughs> we would be dead. Thank God. Thank God we didn't agree on uh, that. Convicts were the only ones who would be in a in a prison. So she why spells, did she spells trekker with two K's? By no the way. No freaking way. Wait, I gotta start this again. <laughs> 
convicts were the only ones who would be in a prison, so why did we need to get a trucker from someplace like that? <laughs> Lotus, why are we going to the prison to find a trucker? I question <laughs> even so nervously. <laughs> oh my god. Come on, Augie. Even Rumble Twaza has its share of convicts, he assured. But our trucker... <laughs> Already. Isn't a convict. The paragraph is Semicolon. done yet. Oh no. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Three trekkers in a semicolon <laughs> in half a paragraph. My God almighty. Oh. May God have mercy on our souls tonight. I swear to God. We're, enjoy your poison. Thank you. Where where did I stop? Ugh. At the semicolon. At the trekker semicolon. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're going to be done. Um, He just works and lives there. He actually lives in a tower, too. In tower, too, to be exact. The two are towers. We, we, that's, the what, two that's what I just said. Towers. That's what I just said. Are we supposed to know what tower, two is? <laughs> we have no idea. And we just found out there's a prison <sighs> in the woods. <laughs> oh, my God. Why would a rumble twasium want to live in a prison, I asked. What? Because, Augie, Emily began, he's not your usual rumble toss in. Hold on a second. So he's not a prisoner? He lives there? Yeah, I guess so. But she just said something about convicts. What? I don't know. We should move um, to a prison. Yeah. I think just, we'll just, just, just like The Walking Dead. There you go. Within moments, Lotus was jumping up and down on my shoulder like an overexcited child. Please, Emily, let me tell him. Please, please, please. Go ahead. I really don't care," said Emily, leading us deeper into the woods. She's a typical tsundere guy. She's really <laughs> gonna turn around. <laughs> Lotus clung to my cheek as he began to tell his dramatic tale. A long, long, long time ago, Hayward oh. Henderson Rumble Twaza was the most handsome Rumble Twazian who ever lived. Is it? Wait, hold on. Is this Prince Zuko? Do you think it's gonna turn it's out possible. to be him? It's possible. It's possible. He's like the only one who hasn't been introduced yet. Yeah. It has to be him. Yeah. Oh, and the Avatar woman. The, the woman with the pineapple suit. Is there pictures of this? Not yet. No, nah, um, something will come up. He was... Yeah, he was even more handsome than our founder, Tumble Rumble Twaza. Ugh. Anyway, he <laughs> actually courted with Zelna, and they were the happiest couple on the island. Wait, I interrupted. Hey, we're, <laughs> hey, we're dated Zelna? <laughs> we're getting all the gossip. All right. <laughs> all, the, all the island gossip today. <laughs> Oh my god. Lotus sighed. Just go with it. <laughs> <laughs> Just go with it. He's, he's Just a, go with it. He's really progressive for being like a little animal. A little lemur. <laughs> the way he speaks. Very modern. Just go with it. <laughs> he gets tossed around. <laughs> I nodded and let Lotus continue with his story. Anyway, he was the most handsome and greatest trekker in Rumble Plaza. Jesus Christ. And loved Zelna with all his heart. Ugh. He soon found out what Zelna was doing, and she even asked him to help her take over the palace. When Hayward refused and threatened to leave her, Zelna went bananas and put an evil spell on him. Bananas. An, an evil spell. It's just, just an evil one. What kind of spell? I asked. An evil yeah. one. Say it. Say it. <laughs> an evil one. <laughs> oh, let's see. Um, I asked, beginning to bite my nails because of how nervous I was. Ew. Jesus. <laughs> like, who explains that? Chicken like, fell on my the nails. Look, Mouse pad, thank you for the chicken fell on the ground. Now I have to clean the chicken. Thank you so much. Ah, oh, Georgie. Uh, Georgie's wonderful. Emily turned around so quickly that I almost bumped into her again. She placed both hands on my shoulders and moved closer to me. Ooh. Oh, wow. She told him that if he didn't want to stay with her, she was going to destroy him forever. Emily shook me back and forth. Okay. Zelda not only made his e him ageless and immortal, but she also what? put a spell on him. I, we, did we just not establish that? Did she say what, what spell What kind was? of spell? Again, what yeah, kind He never of explained spell? what spell it was. <laughs> you have to ask twice. Oh, no. This is really bad. What? What? Lotus got up into my face again and placed his paws on my lips. She made him into a flesh-eating dinosaur. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. That lives in prison because mm -hmm. he could fit in there. I mean, DJ Baby D. Okay, dude. thanks for the follow. Can I Welcome. now finish Thank this the story? Thank you so much. Happy birthday to me. I screamed and fell onto the ground as Lotus ran around me in circles, roaring like a dinosaur with his arms lifted high above his head. Emily laughed. Because, yeah, because because dinosaurs walk around like this. <laughs> 
and placed Lotus on her shoulders, shoulder before helping me up. Come now, Lotus, she began. You know that's not the truth. I know, I uh, replied Lotus with a heavy sigh. But dinosaurs are much cooler. Okay. Wait, so he's not a dinosaur. I guess not. What is he? After I was on my feet again, Emily placed Lotus back on my shoulder and dusted me off with her hand. Zelna put a spell on Hayward that made him so hideous that no one could ever look at He's him Zuko. in love. Absolutely Zuko. Zuko. <laughs> Therefore, he got a job at the prison watching over the prisoners from Tower 2. Emily explained, pointing through the trees. He never comes down from Tower 2, and no one ever visits him. I looked where Emily was pointing and saw an old wooden tree house that was only a short distance away as we continued towards the prison. All I could think about was the possibility of Hayward eating me up with his sharp fangs and claws. Why would you... You into vor, my man? You like that? Uh, okay. This is dinosaurs walk around like Scooby-Doo villains. They do. They do. This is, this is her only interaction with them. Uh, okay. Once we were at the staircase that wrapped around the tree, we began to... How tall is this treehouse? Is this a treehouse? It's a treehouse. How big is it? Oh. There's a staircase? We began to climb each wooden step that would bring us closer to the tr to the trekker and, <laughs> and monster known as Hayward Henderson Rumbletwaza. Just call him Hayward at this point. Seriously. You've introduced us. I, I never call anybody by their full name. Uh, I stayed back as much as I could, allowing Emily to lead the way. We were now as high up as the treetops, and as I peered over the side of the staircase, I could see the prison guards uh, down – the prison grounds down below with over 100 convicts sitting in his courtyard. By the doorway, there was a large, rusty bell hanging from a wooden post. When Emily pulled its rope, the loud echo caused the birds that were nestled in the trees to fly out of them by the dozens. The echo was so loud that it almost caused me to fall from the staircase and plummet to the hard ground below. It was then that a handsome and manly-sounding voice... Ooh, Ew. handsome. He describes it as handsome and manly. Oh, Augie. Uh, echoed throughout the tower. Who goes there? It is I, Emily called, looking up towards the sky. Princess Emily Rumbletwaza. Is everyone related in this story? <laughs> everyone has Rumbletwaza as their last name. What is it that you want from me, he asked. I'm quite busy at the moment and don't have time for visitors. We need your help, sir, Emily begged. Please let us in to talk to you. It will only take a second. Uh, everything got silent and I couldn't help but uh, begin to feel scared. I turned away from the door to begin my tre my trek <laughs> down to the bottom when it suddenly opened. The inside was dark and I really didn't want to enter, but Emily pulled me inside with her. I clung to Emily's jacket once again and trembled in fear. <laughs> what a cool guy. He is. I want him to protect me. Yeah, he's so manly. Uh, okay, I quivered, yanking onto Emily's arm. No one's home. Let's go. She, she, I'm telling you, she she watched a 90s comedy and she's like, I could, I could write this. I could make this work. Before I could even pull Emily towards the doorway, a candle was lit and the room that was once dark and scary turned into an amazingly beautiful sanctuary. Oh, that's a good description. In the corner that was a wooden, there was a wooden desk with maps plastered all over its surface and the walls were covered in paintings of trees and flowers that must have been drawn by whoever lived there. How do you figure that? On the other side of the room, there was a small bed that consisted of pillows and blankets. Beside it, a closet with a golden spyglass hanging off of the door by a tattered rope. Instantly, the shimmer from the spyglass attracted Lotus's attention, and he immediately became hypnotized. That's the I know. only reason she put it there. Yeah, and, and also, she got the spyglass from the um, uh, series of unfortunate events. Oh, my God. So that's another inspirational piece of information just there. sprinkle everything in <laughs> it's it's sourced from every popular series that you can think of um where did i leave off uh, i grabbed his red vest to stop him from trying to approach the spyglass but he was already reaching out for it so the lemur likes my spyglass it sounds like a euphemism <laughs> came the eerie voice uh came the eerie voice once again you start from there okay of course it start it starts with a fright <laughs> Handsome and manly <laughs> voice. It's the kind of voice you want to hear as a man. As a man. As a, as a wimpy man. <laughs> I was so frightened from the sound that I began to back up with Lotus still in my grasp. When I hit something hard and squishy, I saw two arms reach out from behind me and grasp my shoulders. When I turned oh, around... Oh, no, he grabbed his cock! <laughs> oh, no! Oh, my God. This is that kind of novel. Uh, I... 
When I turned around, I bit my hand to cut off the scream that wanted to escape my horrified lips. There, <laughs> in front description. of me, stood Hayward Henderson Rumbletwaza, six feet tall with two of the darkest eyes I'd ever seen glaring, staring into me. He had blonde, scruffy hair, a thin skeleton-shaped body, and a red, hideous burn mark under his left oh, eye, hideous. making him just as revolting as I had pictured him. You thought he was a dinosaur, though. Mm. Was it more... He looked like the walking dead. <laughs> she didn't say that. <laughs> she did. What? <laughs> And because, too. He looked like the walking dead because of how pale and thin he was. When I glanced at his Are fingers... Are they pale? They, they look... That were they look rotten. <laughs> All I could see there, uh, see were long bones covered by a thin layer of flesh. We get it. He's thin. He You've is. already said that. He let go of me as soon as I screamed and turned away to cover his ears with his bony fingertips. <laughs> My god, bones, bones, bones. He's bony, he's horrifying, he's disgusting, he's horrible. Bones, walking dead, pale, bones. Please, don't yell, he pleaded. <laughs> <laughs> it actually sounds like something Albert would say. <laughs> That's why I said it like Please, that. Please, <laughs> don't yell. I'm sensitive to high noises. Please, I begged. Don't eat me. I said it wrong. <laughs> I said it in such a way. Uh, please, I beg, don't eat me. Eat oh you, God. he began. Why would I eat you? I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> this sucks. This sucks. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm crying. This is the worst. Oh, and even if I was going to eat a human being... You certainly wouldn't be it. The lemur looks tastier than you. <laughs> she wants to eat a lemur? Oh, my God. Emily stood there rolling her eyes and threw me down onto the floor. She's Lotus... upset about it, too. She's like, oh, I'm fucking vegetarian. This is bullshit. Where Lotus was looking through the spyglass with such fascination. Emily, however, approached the monster of a man and apologized. Please, Mr. Henderson, don't mind my friend. He's just an ignorant fool. Hayward glanced my way once more and gave me the dirtiest look possible. Oh, another dirty look. Another. <laughs> how do you give a dirtier... I don't even know how you give a dirty look. Wow, what a twist. Yes. <laughs> um, Everyone's giving dirty looks. It's like, he should be used to them by now. He is forgiven. Now, what is it that you need from me? As you know, Emily began, Zelna is only days away from returning to the island. How would he know this? He's in prison. He's in his prison living there. How would he know this? That was Emily, though. No, but she's saying this to him, right? Yeah. Yeah, how would he know this? Oh, yeah, as you know. Duh, yeah. As you know. As everybody knows. Yeah, because they're all on social media. They are. And it's it's all in their tree houses. They send, like, Yeah, it's not like little telegrams. Like, little, uh, little, uh, birds... <laughs> Hayward kicked over Pigeons. a few of his maps that were standing by his desk and grasped the ledge of the window. How could this be happening, Hayward cried. She made me this way, and now she has the audacity to come back? Well, I have someone to help me stop her, Emily assured. That man right there is Augie Atwell. Semicolon. Oh, fuck. Hannah Atwell's son. That man. That man. As you know. <laughs> no, no. If I took Jim Beam every time we had a dirty look, I'd, I'd be dead. Every you, dirty look. I'd never, I'd never be able to stream again. It should be a, a tragedy for everybody, really. And I don't want to, I don't want to do that to people. Okay. Salute. Another semicolon. That's three in a chapter so far. Ah. Oh! Woo! This really needs to be diluted by some Coca-Cola. Woo! Do you want me to give you your Cosmo next time instead? No. No? She's going to be a man like me. Uh, absolutely. She's going to drink like a man. She's so strong. It burns the tongue. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Sorry. My earring got a little... Hannah? I'm going to take yeah. it right off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hannah's the mom. Hey, uh, okay. They, they, they was, there was like a, a, a scene in a chapter where they had a flashback. And uh, Hannah was going out with some guy in a hut. And Zelna was her mom. And I guess they gave birth to Augie? I can't get this off. What are you trying to get I'm off? I'm sorry. My earring got caught. <clears throat> Need help? There we go. You got it? I had to remove them. They were getting in my way of my earrings. hair. Guys, the earrings have been removed. They've been removed. That's how you know this is serious. It's, it's like when a girl takes That's off her right. earrings before a fight and throws down. them down. Yep. This is how you know someone's serious about a book. That's right. Okay? It's about to get very violent in here. All righty. So... 
Hayward grabbed me by my shirt with his bony fingers and lifted me to my feet. I had to admit that for how thin he was, he had the strength, the strength of a mule. Hayward's appearance frightened me so much that I was more afraid of his piercing stare than of his touch. So he looks like this, the Walking Dead. He began, "Is the son of Hannah Atwell?" I nodded, trying not to look directly at him. We need a trekker, and you're the best. Oh my God! <laughs> Stop with the trekkers. Emily assured, looking through Hayward's maps that were scattered out across his desk. Hayward released me once he heard Emily's request and snatched the spyglass away from Lotus's paws. I can't believe she actually spelled Lotus's pause correctly with the co- the um the, co- the apostrophe. The apostrophe. It might have been edited. You that's never know. that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, she uses semicolons to make up for for those errors. Lotus wasn't too happy about it, but he was no match against the monster that stood there before us. He approached the window where Emily was standing and placed the end of the golden spyglass in front of her eye, forcing her to look down upon the prisoners. What do you see? He asked. The prisoners of Rumble Twaza, replied Emily, handing the spy ga- glass back to him. Hayward pushed it back up to Emily's eye and forced her to look back down upon the prisoners. Exactly, he began. What? This is why I can't leave my post. If I leave my post here in the tower and one of them gets loose, Zelma will be the least of our problems. I haven't left, th- left this t- tower. Are they, are they <laughs> also magicians? <laughs> I think the, the, the witch is the bigger issue here. I don't think a prisoner is. If he's the only one watching this prison, we're in trouble. I think I think it's, it's already bad. We've already got budget cuts. I haven't left this tower ever since the day she destroyed my life. Oh, no. And I don't ever plan on doing it. Oh. That's oh, it. And there's oh. a picture. So guys, have to check out. I think this. I've. Have I shown this on stream? I don't even remember. But here they are, guys. Here's Hayward and Emily. Wait, the spyglass is just a little telescope? I thought the spyglass was going to be, like, attached to something. Like a stationary yeah, thing. Yeah, kind of like in um, Breath of the Wild. Like that, there, oh, you didn't you didn't play I that, didn't play so it. never mind. Um, I don't know. I was thinking of the... All the, the all, everyone will agree with you in chat, though. Or who's no, there's a, there's a little scientist, and he has, like, all these gadgets. It reminds me of something that would be in, uh, his, in his lab. That's what I thought. I thought it would be, like, a giant spyglass that you look through. Just call it a telescope. Just call it a telescope, please. Uh, Emily turned away from the window and looked down at the golden spyglass before handing it back to Hayward and pushing it up to his dark, discolored eye, just, just like this, just stabbing it in his mm-hmm. eye. What do you see, she asked. I see a beautiful girl. Oh, shit. Ooh. He's hitting on He's hitting on her. <laughs> yes, and if Zelna gets back on the island, she might make us all all look like you. Damn! That's a little fucked up. Your life is lonely and full of hatred, and I know you wouldn't want anyone to repeat the life you live. Help us get through the woods so we can make sure that she never comes back. Hayward lowered the spyglass from his eye and handed it back to Lotus, who instantly became happy again. It seemed as if what Emily had said immediately changed his mind, causing him to want to say yes. No one, he began, (laughs) should have to live like me, which is why I will help you. I mean, he. To be fair, he's the one who decided to live in this prison. Nobody forced him to. Uh, also, you know, you could put like a little, maybe a Phantom of the Opera mask on the side that uh, that looks a little, little, little rotten. Maybe do that. Stop crying! Come on. Is that him or is that Tomoya? It was him. Come on. Sounded like Tomo. I had to admit that Emily did have a way of getting what she wanted. I o- I was only frightened about the fact of having a, a monster. Oh. There's the boy. <laughs> There's the son. You could hardly see him, but he's here. It's the, the mascot. I was only frightened about the fact of having a monster. Yuki, don't move the microphone. Uh, <laughs> don't move the microphone, Yuki. He's rubbing it. He wants to be on stream. Uh, having a monster lead the way on our journey. It was bad enough that I was afraid of the woods, let alone having this creature guiding us. Hayward was only going to be the, to be leading the way so we could find our supplies. What supply? Oh, for the ingredients for the magic spell that we don't we don't even know what it is. Uh, but what those items were was beyond my wildest imagination. After Hayward has had packed a, a guess guess what color the backpack is? Brown. <laughs> Her guess is in. Guys, guess what the color of the backpack is? I'll give you I'll give you a second to guess the color. You'll never you'll never you'll never believe it. 
You're never gonna believe it. <laughs> brown. It's even better. <laughs> Pirate colored. <laughs> <laughs> Green is also a good guess, actually. Guys, it's a. Uh, Oh, shit. It's a brown backpack, if you can believe that. A oh. brown backpack full of knives, rope, and other needed supplies for our journey. We hurried down the stairs and into the beginning of the woods. Hayward was leading us while Lotus stood on Emily's shoulder and played around with a large map. Just played around with it? Okay. We were like little ants in a big green <laughs> green backyard there's the green representation green backyard because of how tall the trees and grass were uh, as as the weird noises of the area cried out all i could think about was being eaten but the sounds did not seem to bother hayward or emily at all as we trekked on <laughs> lotus jumped onto my shoulder took out hayward's golden spyglass and playfully looked through it lotus that belongs to hayward i said Lotus didn't seem to care because he just kept on looking through as if it were his. Hayward glanced back at us and shook his head. <laughs> just annoyed. <laughs> annoyed at this, at this, uh, uh, oh God, I almost called him a monkey. A lemur. Guys, I'm so sorry. I almost called him a monkey. Before turning uh, to lead us deeper into the woods. After a while, we eventually made it to an old hut that was covered by weeds. Oh, shit. I, I knew it was old because the roof was slightly caved in, semicolon. Not looking forward to this, are you? Do you see? I'm okay. You're, for now. Wait until the 10th semicolon. Oh, God. Wait until the 20th semicolon and tell me you're I'm okay. Greek. I can handle it. I'm Polish. I thought I could handle it. <laughs> okay? We're both two drinking peoples. <laughs> Salut. Ugh. What do the Greeks say when they when they take a shot? Opa. Opa. That's right. Opa! Everybody. Every shot we're going to say opa in chat, okay? <laughs> make this greek guys it's all greek to me <laughs> oh my god and this is the problem every time i i take a shot i forget where i was i know uh making it clear that it had most likely been abandoned years ago i wondered why hayward was stopping us here but i didn't bother asking only because his appearance petrified me just a bit just a tad bit uh, when I didn't bother entering behind him emily rolled her eyes and grabbed hold of my shirt she grabs him a whole bunch yeah Come on, Augie. I couldn't deny her request, not after hearing the anger she had put into it. I knew that if I didn't go along with her, she was bound to punish me for it later. Oh, baby. Inside the hut, the weeds were worse, and it was so dark that I could hardly see where I was walking. Where are we, I asked, glancing around the odd, the odd-smelling place. <laughs> place stinks! It's just like home for him, because his, his apartment smelled, right? This, Emily began, lighting a match, was your parents' <clears throat> hut. After hearing her say this, my curiosity increased. This was where I was born, semicolon. Two semicolons oh. in a matter of sentences, guys. At least it's going down a little smoother. Yeah, but that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing. That's not something you should be getting used to. <clears throat> it's going to go down a lot smoother when uh, you're slurring your speech. Slurring you, your you speech? You slur your speech. Opa! Opa! Come on, guys, in chat. Come on. Opa! We did not drove you last time. Woo! This time we're doing Opa! And not Gangnam Style. I don't want to hear that in chat. <laughs> it's the wrong one. Uh, this was where I played as a small child. The weed-covered floor. <laughs> the weed-covered floor. Wash is where I, What's that? Wash your hands. Wash, no, not wash your hands. <laughs> don't, don't say that one. I, that, I'm not him. Uh, uh, is where I once crawled and probably explored during my days in diapers. <clears throat> While Emily and Hayward were searching the hut, all I could do was stand around and wonder what they were looking for. Seconds later, Lotus was in my face and pulling at my cheeks with his furry paws. Right there. Oh, okay. My days in diapers. <laughs> Alrighty. Come on, Augie. Help us look for it. Look for what? I asked, shooting, shooing Lotus away. Your mother's ingredients for the spell. What? What I couldn't understand is why my mother would have kept her ingredients inside the hut when Zelma was around to destroy it. <laughs> yeah, that's stupid. That's dumb as hell. Wait, did she put a question mark after that? Where? That whole thing. Oh, oh. Uh, what I couldn't understand was why my mother would have kept her ingredients inside the hut where when Zelma was around to destroy it? 
I guess that's appropriate. I don't know. It just seems kind of odd. I don't think a it's question. It's more like when you question yourself, you aren't really questioning it per se. I think if if you're if it's in quotations, you should put a question mark. Not not when it's just know. a narrator. I, I think it's just her it's her way of. I think we could chalk it up to she sucks. She <laughs> sucks as a writer and she's dumb. As I continued to watch Hayward, his slender figure, fingers came across the loose floorboard Oof. that he instantly lifted up, lifted up and placed. Slender. Aside. Oof. I think I found it, he replied, his voice filled with certainty. Found what? I curiosi- curiously asked. <laughs> the list, he replied. In the floor? I questioned. What? Your mother was always known for surprises, Augie, Hayward assured. I guess they were surprised when she died, too. That was her biggest surprise. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't expect it. Um, Emily was at his side in a matter of seconds and placed her own hand down into the hole that had once been covered by the floorboard. Can you reach it? asked Hayward. No, Emily barked. It's too deep. Oh, God. This like, sounds really weird. <laughs> I know. You reach into the hole. It's too deep! <laughs> to the hole. It's too deep. He took his bony finger and stuck it in. It's just nasty. He took his bony third finger. Nasty language. It, it, it's fucking... Um, it's the worst. Lotus jumped down from my shoulder and approached Emily's side to offer her offer his assistance. After Emily had brought her Throw hand back <laughs> out of the hole, Lotus jumped down into the dark crevice to begin his search. Dark. Do you see okay. anything, Lotus? shouted Emily. When she didn't get a response, Emily had begun to worry and looked oh, no. up at me as if I had made him go into the dark hole. Okay. <laughs> we get it. It's a dark hole. <laughs> it's a dark crevice. It's a dark hole. Augie! Is... <laughs> she shouted. Sorry. <laughs> oh, she yelled right at him. Get over here and help us. <laughs> I knelt down at the hole. <laughs> <laughs> Now hole is the favorite word. The favorite I word. knelt down into the hole. hole. I stuck my hand in the hole. Um, and placed my face at its opening. <laughs> <laughs> I placed I placed my face at the opening of the hole. <laughs> this, these are words he would never say again with a woman. Oh God! This is his only uh, experience. Um, to see if any sign of lotus whatever oh my i lay there looking into the dark oblivion for the longest time thinking that something had something <laughs> bad had surely happened semicolon no that's six semicolons we're changing the rule after this chapter six and one that's insanity <laughs> at least it wasn't trekker though trekker we would have been dead by now i wonder if uh <laughs> i wonder when uh when augie eats pussy if he stares into the dark oblivion of it as well. I wonder if that's his uh, his description. Not that Augie would ever eat pussy because he's scared of every woman that he meets. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. <laughs> Making yourself laugh. Opa! Okay. Oh, man. Oh, God. That was until suddenly a scary-looking face with fangs jumped out at me. What? It came straight up from the hole. Oh, God. Causing me to jump back and cover my face with my hands. I lay there so still, wondering what this thing was and if it had gobbled up Lotus. That was until I heard the familiar childish voice laughing and roaring like a dinosaur once again. Oh, God. God. that run on sentence. Oh, my God. I instantly turned around to spot Lotus running around Hayward in an endless in endless circles, carrying a stuffed lizard that had an open mouth covered in plush fangs. With a long red this was in the hole sticking out of it. Yeah, this was in the hole. Emily the... immediately snatched the lizard away from him in anger and made him stop. Lotus, you had me worried sick. Don't you ever do that again? I could see how angry she was at him, and Lotus made no attempt to continue his little joke any longer. I rose to my feet and, and she approached threw him Hayward. And hit him. <laughs> and then she threw him across <laughs> the room. Who was neither scared nor amused by Lotus's little joke. How did a stuffed lizard get on this island when they live in I huts? Don't, I don't I don't know. It, this is like she's using lost logic. Like there was a plane that just crashed and there was toys No, not and stuff. even. Not even oh. that. Like Dharma initiative logic. Oh, oh. Like like people are getting pallets of of modern items from yeah. from somewhere else. Make it makes no fucking sense. They got a stuffed lizard and then they got a prison on there. Whoa! Whoa don't break it. I'm not going to break it. This don't thing gets it. this gets caught. I got to recline, guys. So I guess the recipe wasn't in the hole after all, I blurted out. Yes, it was, said Emily, showing me the lizard and pulling on its tongue. It's in the lizard. Oh, give me a break. What? 
<laughs> what? Uh, that, that doesn't even make How sense. How would she know this? She... Why would you tug on the tongue, too? I don't he know, man. Ask enough questions. He doesn't. He just <laughs> takes everything at face value. You'd think someone that's afraid of everything would ask a lot of questions. Okay. I waited there, watching Emily as she pulled on the lizard's tongue, causing a tiny piece of paper to emerge from its stomach. I knew that was going to happen. Oh, God. She untied it and unfolded the paper to reveal whatever was on it. She hid the recipe inside your stuffed lizard to show off, throw, throw off Zelna. What the freaking heck? Like, <laughs> they, they, there was like, this is like a, what, a wooded area? I mean, they could have like buried it somewhere. and No, it's in the hut. And what did the, okay. When did the, do you remember when the parents died? No. Neither do I. But let's assume they died in their 30s, okay? Uh, this is a hut. It's probably made out of, what, bamboo and twigs? And, and twigs. Would, wouldn't would nature reclaim this? Wouldn't the, This would need constant maintenance. Especially if you're, if you're putting it together with, like, vines or things that you're finding around the woods. That would be reclaimed really quickly. Why would this still be standing? <laughs> you could find sense. it easily. Oh, you're going to like this because it's it's the she actually has what's on the paper. Oh, great. She has a list. It, it says a list. I tug on every lizard's tongue. <laughs> Hayward took the piece, of, piece paper of paper from Emily and read off the list. Two blizzard lizard heads, four furs of a koala, three front teeth whole of a fur shark. Hold on. Whole furs of a... You want like a whole koala pelt? Four of them? You got to kill four koalas for this shit? What are the, oh shit, you gotta, we gotta kill four koalas? Yeah, three front teeth of a shark, the claw of a dung bat, shell of a dragon egg. It's a dung bat, it's one, a shit bat. <laughs> it's called the one, shit bat. One cup of lava from Mount Rumble Twaza. What? Why is everything called Rumble Twaza? I like, don't know, she, Everyone, she, everyone's last name is Rumble Twaza. She, she couldn't come up with any other names for this place. Call it fucking New Zealand, because it's by a, Australia. A pinch of Rumble Twaza in sand, one perfect star gozy in stone. How many things are on this list? Boil all together and rub substance into Well, stone. you won't need to boil it because you have a cup of lava. That's you true. don't need to boil it anymore. Before throwing into Mount Rumble Twaza. So, what? Oh, Lord of the Rings again. Lord of the Rings. That was another reference. Lord of the Rings, guys. So, keep you guys ever seen? Pocket. Have you guys ever seen a dung bat? Oh, the bats just swoop down. Every time a cow takes a shit, they just scoop it right up. I had never time you could heard see of some of these creatures in all my life. <laughs> some of these creatures. And only, it could only wonder what my mother had left out to cause Zelma to Hold come on. back. Can I, can yeah, I yeah, cut yeah. in one last time? Yeah. Why are there koalas on this in this island? Because she took it from Aladdin. I told you this. Koalas were in Aladdin? That episode of Aladdin. Remember I told you the one with Weird Uncle Wally? Oh. There were but, like, koala creatures in that. But she's making up every other creature, and then she, then she makes a, a shark and a koala. I don't know, man. She we went past Mexico. With that one word she made up, but she used it every... It's so true. It's so true that she used Rumble Twaza. Yeah, everywhere. it's it is. You know what I think it is also? She's trying to make something iconic like Hogwarts. Yeah, that stands out. But he, the, that people like she keep didn't using. use Hogwarts over and over no, and over she didn't. and over. Like, no. this is Hogwarts. No, she, she's trying to hammer it in your head because it's so terrible. Oh. She's trying to use it every opportunity she gets so that you, you, you can't help but remember it now. Had she left oh. out the dung bat claw or the two <laughs> blizzard lizard heads? Blizzard lizard. Oh, God. Oh, no, Emily exclaimed. That's what the problem was all along. This is why we could never figure out what the recipe was. Why? I asked. Hayward folded my mother's list and shoved it into his pocket before turning to, my, to face me with his hideous face. <laughs> None of the main ingredients on our list can be found on the island. Chapter 5. What? We're up to chapter 5? Yes, sir. Oh my god, we finished the chapter. We did it. Heavily inspired by the Aladdin TV spinoff. Absolutely. <laughs> you really think she watched the Aladdin TV spinoff? She, hey, if I did, she did. Yeah, but you're not. She made her main character look like a boo. But but you're not. I'm not an, an idiot, idiot, but still, <laughs> I big... based the character off of it though. Yeah, okay? but it, it was your own thing. It wasn't a fucking koala, and that's no. it. <coughs> Chapter five is called Rough Waters Ahead. Do you want to do semicolon drinks or something else? You can do whatever you want. I'm we'll do. It. it didn't exceed five semicolons, so we'll do it again. But if this. This is the rule. If any chapter exceeds five semicolons, we change the rule. Okay? Rough waters ahead. 
I just didn't understand what was going on. My mother had made a spell directly for this place called Rumble Twat. Why are you giving us uh. a, a synopsis? This literally just happened. This just happened. We don't need... This isn't a, a Dragon Ball Z what happened last episode. <laughs> you, you haka show. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to, to tell us again. Uh, what is this book? This book is... It's a recap episode, yeah. The Escapades of Augie Atwell. This is a book written by a, a, a person we know who shilled it heavily for about three years and thought she was a major success as a writer. Meanwhile, it, it's the, the 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 worst book we have ever read, and we've Ooh, never finished it. That's going to be fun. What is this? I don't know, but that's going to be really interesting to read. Oh, no. That's going to be good. Uh, But it, it's a mess. That's all you need to know. I, I might be the only person. We might be the only people who have ever read this in its entirety mm -hmm. by the time this is done. Okay. <clears throat> and the people she paid off. Oh, yeah. Her, her friends who she she gave this to uh, some of the kids of her friends, which I – God have mercy on their souls for reading this. <laughs> uh, let's see. But didn't get any of the ingredients from the island. What was, what use was that? Emily had told me that over the years the Rumble Twasians had tried – everything on the island to make a spell strong enough to destroy zelna why not just make a gun <laughs> why not just import gun and put okay? like certain magic in it you just put a little magic just in the a gun. little bit of magic and... just use the the avada kadavra uh spell there you go and there you go it's, it's done it's over and now uh she knew why it had failed every single time of course my mother wait hold on a second if they've used everything oh okay they she did cover her butt on this one nothing is on the island uh, let's see. Of course, my mother was some kind of genius to come up with a plan as brilliant as that. <laughs> yeah, she's so she smart. Was. It made sense to make up a spell with things that couldn't be found on the island. Well, I mean, she, she can fly anywhere she wants, though, so she could find them anyway. So she could confuse Zelna. Okay, if the ingredients aren't from the island, I began, then where are they from? Neighboring islands. She would never think of doing that. She would never think of going to a different island that's right next door. Hayward kindly replied. Which ones, I asked. Hayward was the tr God <laughs> Hayward was the trekker, and he was the smartest when it came to that sort of stuff. At least that's why what Emily kept telling me. He immediately pulled a book out of his satchel, took a seat on the floor, and opened it. The pages were old, but that uh, that didn't seem to stop him from researching through the book, researching through it. It's his own book. He doesn't need to research he's, it. He's got to research this. He's got to <laughs> memorize it. It's like it's like what she did when she wrote this book. <laughs> After a while, he pointed to a page and looked up at both Emily and I. The first thing, dot, 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 he began, dot, 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 dot <laughs> is two blizzard lizard heads. Oh, the blizzard lizard is only found in one place that's in the bl blazarian jungle. And also, if you're saying the species of the creature, you know, she's not going to be like, I can't find these on the island. What, Where could they be? You just, you just look somewhere else. That's all. You, I mean, koalas just go to go to Australia. There's yeah. plenty of koalas there. It's not like it's that hard. She listed what they are. Just put them in a bag. Sharks. We already saw a shark in the beginning of this. Just get three three of their teeth. Through. <laughs> what, what else is here? I don't know where the dung bat is though, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> oh my god, where is that located? I asked. I've got a map in my bag. He said, pointing to a large rolled up document that was st sticking out of it. First we have weeds all over the ground. Now we got a nice rolled up document. The, I think they're doing something else over here. I think so, too. Uh, for once, I was all gung-ho about... T about... What? For once, I was all gung-ho about to find whatever needed Ooh, to be... a bad sentence. ...put into the stone? What the fuck was that sentence? It's a bad sentence, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the sooner we found the ingredients, the sooner I could t return to my own home again. Come on, I groaned. Come on, I groaned. <laughs> Let's find Edgar and get going. <laughs> Uh, no, we can't bring Edgar. Emily grabbed the collar of my shirt to stop. Why does she keep grabbing his shirt all you, the time? You, you know, she... I feel like PETA would be involved with this, too. Yes, but this is... No, she's no, grabbing him. I know him. she's grabbing him, but I feel like PETA and, like, some kind of human rights organization... Uh, Needs to organization, take a peek at this book. There's yeah, a lot of abuse in this book. There's a lot of abuse. Animals mm. being thrown. Oh, don't worry, guys. She, she, she says gung-ho again. My gung-ho attitude slowly perished once I heard Emily refuse my request. Why? Why had she refused to bring Edgar? I was finally getting used to the oversized bird, and now she was refusing refusing to travel with him. I didn't even remember the bird. That it's been so. Hasn't it been a while? Yes. Okay. Okay. Taking this sentence into account. Okay, I'm gonna read it again, and I want you to predict 
what the next uh, dialogue is going to be, okay? Why? Why had she refused to bring Edgar? I was finally getting used to the oversized bird, and now she was refusing to travel with him. What is the next uh, dialogue going to be? Say that one more time. Why had she refused to bring Edgar? What do you think the next dialogue by Augie is going to be? Something about being afraid of it. Mm -mm. No? Mm -mm. Nah. It's going to be, why can't Edgar fly to the jungle? We're going to say exactly what we just said, but in dialogue. Because it's important to hammer it home. I just thought he, he would say, like, I'm afraid of birds. No, no, no. See, <laughs> you, would, you would think that because Augie is supposed to be a coward. But yeah. that just disappears whenever it's convenient. He's, he's just not enjoying anything like he hasn't he, sucks. he hasn't come to that point in in a story where you know he he was so reluctant and then he's like i am the yeah I'm that, all for that this is the art gung-ho yeah to do this yeah, gung, gung -ho. <laughs> <laughs> that's what should happen that is what should happen he should this should be we're almost halfway through this book and he hasn't shown that he's changing at all he's still a wimp and he just wants to go home are we halfway we're almost, about halfway almost halfway well how many okay. pages are in this about 300 we're at 112 right now so we're a third of the way there <sighs> why can't we can't fly edgar to the jungle because bigger birds might hunt him down what <laughs> bigger than him bigger than something a, a, a person can lie on the back of bigger than him <gasps> bigger Harry, birds Harry Potter reference again what the um in the fourth harry potter um the hagrid's pet that um that bird kind of it's the like griffin the, the, the yeah yeah that's like another reference that what do you she, mean you said oh, because it, because people can fly on it like they can go oh on it. maybe see she's taking little <laughs> she made her own bird yeah. from harry potter Buck beak, that's right oh yeah that's Buck beak. right i forgot all about it <laughs> bigger birds i thought what could be bigger than edgar i didn't bother asking though well that's a shame because that's usually what you do and knew that it would only make me more frightened than I already was. With us not being able to fly to the jungle, I knew that this journey was going to be a dangerous one. Zelna was sure to kill us if she spotted us outside the island's boundaries. God, I wish she would, so this would be over. She might not have been able to get on Rumble Twaza just yet, but she could kill... She could... Ki what? But she could kill if she spotted the likes of us traveling below the sky. That was one of the reasons why I was so set on flying on Edgar's back. Lotus seemed excited as he jumped up and down on my shoulder, but I knew this journey would be anything but exciting. We'll take my father's ship, said Emily, and we'll drape the sails in dark sheets with pirate skulls painted on the front. Oh, of wow, that's Why? <laughs> Why? And also, what, they were attacked by an elephant while this happened. Why would they? <laughs> I mean, I think the bird would be easier. See, she couldn't even come up with something really unique instead of just having the traditional black sheets with a skull on it. No. Like, this is an island full of animals and weird crap. Magic yeah, no, it's just, and, just pirates. Just pirates. Pirates with their cocks out. Pirates of the Caribbean. I mean, there you, there go. you go. Pirates, well, pirates with their cocks out <laughs> is what they are. Uh... <laughs> Hold on a second. Okay, dark sheets with pirate skulls painted on the fronts of them. What will that do, I asked. Oh, my God. It will make us look like pirates. <gasps> no, that she way, did not. Yep. Oh, my God. That way, Zelna will leave us alone. That's yeah, a that, great plan. That's a good disguise. That's a really good plan. She'll never know it's them. Oh, my God. This is never really <laughs> pirates. <laughs> Like don't, the Lost Boys. Don't, give her, like, don't give her that much credit. Don't oh give her that much God. credit. That was original at the time. This is this is just reaping what other people have sown. Once we made <laughs> it back to the castle, Lotus ran towards the docks where a black ship was sitting in the water. I turned to face Emily again, noticing that she was carrying a pile of folded black sails. <laughs> and Well, they got to be pretty big. She's holding all of them? Well, a sail is gigantic. She's it a strong is. woman. She's an Amazon woman. I want you to draw Emily at some point, just big and broad shoulders, just an Amazon yeah, woman, just so bit. strong. Um, a strong. This should this should be every woman in chess uh, role model. <laughs> Zelda must be an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> she's a witch, but she's an idiot. <laughs> brown rags incoming. Not this time. We changed it up. We've got brown. We've got green. Now black has been introduced. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I turned to face Emily again, noticing she was carrying a pile of folded black sails and motioned me to help her. When we were on the ship, she began unfolding them, and I helped her bring the old sails down and replace them with the new ones. My father uses these when he sails out to the other islands with his men. Ooh. 
with this man? Ooh. Emily replied. <laughs> a- Emily replied, "It always keeps the bad things away." The bad things. What are the bad things? It's the bad things. It keeps the bad things away. She likes to do bad things. <laughs> It's fun to do bad things, because I wanted to do her rat stuff with my friend. I loved hearing Emily talk in her sweet tone, in her sweet tone of voice, because it always made up for when she yelled at me. I think he's <laughs> falling for it. I, he's, he fell for her the first day he met her. He's like, oh, I, can't, I love this woman. Like, he essentially said, I love this woman when he first met her. It was ridiculous. Do you want to read the next one? Sure. Where, where am I starting? Uh, right at the top of the page. Perfect. Aye, aye, Captain First Mate Lotus reporting for duty. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. This, this is... What, what was the the Peter Pan movie with, with Robin Williams? Was it Hook? Pan. I mean... No, it was Hook. Hook. I'm sorry. This, this is like... She watched Hook and she used the same humor. Yeah, <laughs> it's <I> called <laughs> Pan. <laughs> you said Peter Pan. You said Pan. Pan. It's called Pete. <laughs> What's the Peter Pan movie? Oh, Pete. my God. The Adventures of Pete and Pan. Oh my God! Don't 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 get me. <laughs> She'll uh, laugh forever if I start. It's true. Okay. Uh, I turned around as soon as I heard the familiar boyish voice, oh, geez, and saw <laughs> Lotus standing there beside me, wearing a red bandana around his head and looking through. Oh, the blood! Holy shit! Once again. Holy shit! Oh my God! He he's a blood. What, what do you see? No, I was just reading what they were saying. Sorry. She's she's the perfect woman, and she also has the most beautiful, perfect voice. Oh, absolutely. I'm jealous. She is. I would fall in love with her if she tugged me around and hit me and yelled at me. <laughs> Emily laughed and shook her head as Lotus curled up into the crow's nest to look out upon the blue sea. That lemur is ridiculous, I moaned, looking back at Emily. He's only a child, Augie. Don't you remember when you what? were a child? She He's asked. a child? I thought he was a monkey. <laughs> He's, he's, as he called her. How? What? As he called it a monkey. But it's a... Whatever. Oh. Whatever. Monkey. Child. Monkey. Lemur, child. It's all the same. It's the same. I shook my head. No, I don't. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, once our ship sailed, I lost track as to where Emily had gone off to and found myself sitting beside Hayward, who was steering the ship and looking over his map. I had to admit that when I first met him, I had judged him too quickly. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, you were terrified of a man because he was disfigured. Yes. Holy shit. He was hideous. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's, he's ugly as fuck, but I judged him too harshly. Oh, uh, my God. But deep down, I knew that his heart was in the right place. I just couldn't understand why Zelna had cursed him. Oh, my God. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to make a prediction, everybody. I'm going to predict that this is his dad. Mm. That's why she cursed him. I'm making that prediction right now. This is his father, and he's going to get turned back into a human at the end. That's my prediction. I thought he was a human. He was just hideous. Well, I mean, like, the curse will be lifted. Oh. No, well, well he's he not. No, no, no. He's not a human because he's so horrifyingly ugly. You understand. Once you have a disfigurement, according to Augie, ugly. you're disgusting, ugly, horrifying, and your humanity is lost, and you're part of the the Walking Dead, according to Augie Atwell. <laughs> oh man. Um, getting a little fresh sea air wasn't such a bad thing at all, and after a while, I began to enjoy it. After sitting there watching Hayward for a few hours in silence, I found myself over at the railing of the ship, sitting there without a care in the world. It was so peaceful, and it would have stayed that way if Lotus had not began begun singing. Oh, oh come on. If, uh, let's see. He was singing an old pirate song, and I could have tolerated it if he had known the actual lyrics. How would you know the lyrics? I don't know. Oh, it's... Oh, what my is... God. <laughs> what is it? Ugh. All he kept repeating was, Yo-ho, yo-ho, a pirate's life for me. Oh, God. Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, God. Lotus, would you stop my shouting? <laughs> I wish you would stop, too. <laughs> Not being able to tolerate it any longer. Seconds later, he was at my side, looking through the spyglass once more. You're so boring, Augie. <laughs> the, the, the lemur said that? <laughs> You're so boring. He did. It really is oh. spot the Disney ripoff. That's, that's the oh. game this book forces you to play. Oh, my God. It's I always so thought bad. my master would have been way more fun than you. 
I couldn't believe that this lemur belonged to me. I like I'm... that you made Lotus a sassy gay guy. <laughs> I think that's a way better voice than I had for him. Because it's like it's like he has an attitude every time he speaks. He to does. Him. He really does. It's like oh, oh my god. And he's got a lot of sass to it for a lemur. Oh, but that's a boo that... for you. I knew that once it was time for me to leave the island, I wouldn't be taking him with me. <laughs> there was no way that I was going to be the laughing stock of Sydney for having a talking lemur as a pet. Oh, God. <laughs> you can make he, a lot of money. You can make a lot he of money with that. Money. He doesn't see the business no. deals that he could have with this. I mean, people were making money with having a little dancing monkey. Yeah, the, uh, and a and all a that. singing monkey would be yeah. better. A lot more money, baby. You're not my lemur. Yes, I am. Don't be silly. Lotus giggled, still looking through my spyglass. My father belonged to your father, and his father belonged to your grandfather. This is a tale of slavery. <laughs> now he needs to sing zippity doo dah and we'll come full oh circle. Oh my god. Jesus. Uh, okay. My, was that something you would brag about as a lemur? My father belonged to your father. Oh my god, I know. It sounds terrible. My father belongs belonged. to your father. My father was your father's property. It's not even like... That's why I belong to you. It's not even like... He he was like his part companion. of the family. He was this yeah. One was part of the family. It's not like it's not like you're saying he you know my I'm a dog and my my father was was your your father's pet. Right. There's a completely different connotation to that. No, my father belonged to your my my father could my father could could sell you to someone else <laughs> for a profit. Is what he's saying. I didn't reply to this remark and just rolled my eyes in annoyance. <laughs> Can't, can't set the lemur free like the genie in Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's what it is. Or Dobby free. Oh, oh my god. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is. Just give him a sock. Just give him a sock and he's set free. <laughs> oh, crap. Could I ask you something? Asked Lotus after a few moments of silence. What? When we get back to Sydney, could I have my own room? Oh. <sighs> <laughs> You're supposed to laugh at this, by the way. If you're not laughing in chat, you're not understanding this book. Well, it was then I, that I began to laugh uncontrollably. I couldn't stop myself from finding this remark most amusing. What's so funny? He asked, crossing his furry arms over one another. We? Sydney? I began. We will not be going to Sydney together. You're not going to... Yo, you're going to stay with Emily. But I'm here to serve you. I don't belong to Emily. Oh my god, this really is a slavery story. <laughs> <laughs> oh my so god, Tommy, this, yeah. Can you imagine if this became popular? How how much outcry there would be for this? Oh. <laughs> And, 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 Do and Dobby was abused by the, the mouse, yeah. so it, it makes he, sense. But this is even worse. It is. Because it's... at least Dobby Dobby was a house elf. That was, like, his lot in life. Lotus is saying that he, he belongs to somebody. Mm-hmm. Lotus is, is, is selling himself into slavery. Look, Lotus. It's I roots can't. for kids. <laughs> Oh my, oh my god. Lotus is Kunta Quinte for kids. Oh, jeez. That's terrible. Look, Lotus, I began. I can't have you living with me. You need to be with Emily and other <sighs> monkeys like you. Oh, here we go. Oh, Christ. Again. Here we go. He forgot what, what animal it was already. Hearing this had hurt his feelings because as that, that's not good. You don't put a comma because as yeah, soon as the you words do according to her. Lips. You also put a comma when you describe something as large. Oh, my God. He lowered his spyglass and wiped away the tears that escaped his eyes. After a few moments, he turned away and slowly pulled off his bandana. <laughs> He's no longer part of the I books. don't know any other monkeys. With that being said, he walked away and never looked back. Oh, no, he's upset. I wasn't sure what he was talking about, but at the moment, I didn't really care. <laughs> well, this is really upset. Ah, fuck him. <laughs> fuck him. Who cares? Once night fell, I found myself below the ship's deck and heading to my room. On the ship, there were three bedrooms, along with some other rooms that I had yet to enter. My room, however, consisted of nothing more than a hammock to lie in and a window to gaze out upon the sea. No green walls? Course, what the fuck? Yeah, he, it's just as bland as he what is. What the fuck? That sucks. After crawling into my hammock, I looked over at a nearby shelf to spot Lotus. He was curled up in an old life jacket, lying with his back facing me. I had to admit that I had treated him rather poorly earlier, and I knew that no I needed shit. to apologize to him. Yeah, right? Lotus, are you awake? I asked, lightly tapping him on his furry shoulder. Lotus just pulled the life jacket over his head and moaned. Go away! I'm sorry about what I said to you earlier. Just leave me alone, Augie, he shouted. I gave out a heavy sigh and decided to get myself some fresh <sighs> air to clear my mind of things. <sighs> 
After walking out in the hallway, I noticed Emily standing there in front of me with... Oh, the page stuck together. I'm like, what the heck? It didn't make sense. God, I wish, I wish you... I wish you didn't realize that so we could skip uh, a page. With her arms crossed over one another and growling as if I had done something wrong. I'll finish this page and then you can go. Okay. Hi, Emily. Don't hi, Emily, me, Augie. She's always mad. I know. Every time. She's on her cycle all the time. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> she said it not me, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I couldn't understand what I had done to make her so angry, but I was certainly going to find out. What did I do? I asked. Lotus told me what you said to him today, she began. How could you say those things to him? He's been do calling him a know? monkey the whole time. <laughs> now you're upset? He's been calling him a monkey for three chapters. God. Do you even know that he is the last of his kind and he doesn't have any friends? I listened to em Emily yell at me, but I found it hard to believe that she, that he didn't have any little monkey friends. Oh my God. He any, called him a monkey again. Any little monkey friends or family of his own to be with. How is it that he doesn't have any friends? Like you said before, he's just a child. Emily leaned herself <laughs> up against the wall and sighed before continuing. So he's throwing a child around. I all right. I'm not gonna say any. I, I'm not gonna read. I believe Zelna killed off his entire kind. I bet you. I bet uh, you. Oh, that's that's your yeah. that's your prediction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, uh, this is a very good comment. Augie is like if Ron from Harry Potter was the main character. <laughs> Maybe I'm it wrong. really is because Ron's a shitty character too. <laughs> And he hates everything, and he whines and complains. After oh. Zelna tried to come back onto the island, his family and colony left. Ah, crap. He stayed here because he knew that he belonged to you, and today you destroyed that meaning. He left his family to serve you. So, sorry oh, there. God. Where? On the bottom? Yeah, now. <laughs> When's that next new menstruation emoji coming out? <laughs> Soon. I hope. I need that representation. I, I need to... I need to know when women uh, are having their cycles so I could respect them. Now I felt really bad about what I had said and done to him. He was only a child. A child who had left his family for someone that he didn't even know. Well, he didn't leave his family because his father belonged to someone else. So he was born into this. I'm sorry. I didn't know about that. Before I could say another word, Emily walked back into her room that was across from mine and slammed the door closed. Semicolon. Are we still in a hut or are we in the pirate ship now? What room are I we in? I thought we were in the deck. So we're in the pirate ship. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she slammed the door of the pirate ship. Oh, boy. This is my cross to bear. Opa, everybody. Opa in chat. It's very sticky. I know. It's a sticky situation. It's, it's because it keeps leaking out. Mm. Oh! Do you want a drink? Do you want, like, water? Sure. Fiji water. Sure. Guys, this the stream is sponsored by Fiji water. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Please uh, tweet Fiji and send them this clip, and then also send them an invoice for the amount that they would owe me to advertise. How did we get into the pirate ship? <laughs> uh, good question. I think we're we're taking the pirate ship to another island to find creatures that don't exist. I didn't know we were already on the pirate ship. Um, good question. I don't know. That's my answer. I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Leaving me alone once more. I stood there feeling bad about what I had done to get to, to Lotus and began to make my way up to the top deck to get some fresh air. Okay, so we are in the pirate ship. Once I made it outside, the night air greeted me with its chill and blackness. Uh, I found <laughs> blackness. <clears throat> she can't describe the night like anything else. <laughs> I found a spot at the edge of the bow of the bow. I'm sorry, the bow, and took a seat to gaze upon the stars. I soon found myself looking over in the direction of the ship wheel, only to spot Hayward lying next to it. He's sleeping in front of the 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 wheel. So nobody's driving this thing. No one's piloting. Uh, let's see. Only to spot Hayward lying next to it, staring up at the same group of stars that I was. Uh, this is when they're going to connect, guys. Even though Hayward was gruesome. <laughs> she gruesome. Even though Hayward was gruesome. He like, he, like, shows him. He shows how human he is. Or she shows how human he is for a second. It's like, oh, he's just over there looking at the same stars I am. Even though he was gruesome. <laughs> 
<laughs> just has to has to like jab him with the knife. He keeps and twist he keeps bringing up about his appearance. Like he just can't see past. That. No, he no. can't. Like he's like, oh, no. Hayward sure has a lot of hobbies, like I do. Even though he's disgusting and repulsive, and I can't look at him. Oh my god, I couldn't stand to be alone any longer, and scooted my way over to him. I didn't turn to look back at Hayward once I was beside him, and kept my back turned away from his. From his malformed face. Oh my god. <laughs> it's just... This is a kid's book, everybody. This is what kids are talking And taught. that's what's funny, is that, like, she, she's basically teaching children to just constantly make references to ugly people's to, to faces. To ugly people's faces? Just like, just so you know, if you see someone ugly, you're allowed to You're allowed to think that they're disgusting and also bring <laughs> and it up to them. use those words in use your the, head. Say disgusting, <laughs> gruesome, malformed, and say it to them. And and if you want to compliment them, say, you know what, even though you're d d a disgusting uh, uh, creature that is subhuman, I would still really like to lie next to you and look at the same stars, even though you're malformed. Use those words. Ugly people are not humans. That's right. It's true. It's true. That's this right. is what this book teaches us. And it also teaches us that slavery happens. <laughs> and it's okay. And uh, treat animals like crap. <laughs> you treat, they throw animals across the room <laughs> if they piss you off. Uh, <laughs> I had a lot of good lessons here. Sleepless night, Augie, he asked. I guess you could say that, I said, looking down at my feet. How about you? He won't look him in the eyes. How about you? I never sleep. It's hard for me to do so. Why is that, I asked. I felt Hayward's... Oh, no. I felt Hayward's hand touch my shoulder. Ooh, we're getting I, really uh, and I slowly interesting turned, now. I slowly turned towards him, being forced to look at his hideous face. Oh my god! <laughs> I used to be handsome enough to enjoy the company of beautiful women Ooh. and loving friends. What he paid for his women? Ooh. that's what it sounded like he was gonna get to. He's, he's the, comp the company the of company. beautiful women. Enjoy the con. Basically, guys, what I want to tell you here is Hayward used to fuck a lot. <laughs> Both beautiful women and loving friends. Oh, God. He began, but now I'm alone and find myself lying awake most nights. He, he, okay, so he, what he's saying is he's so backed up because he hasn't fucked oh in a God. while. He can't sleep. He can't get it off his mind. So, hey, oh, guys, this is what I want to tell you in a children's book. Hayward was busy jerking off when all he walked in. Okay, I want you to get that oh, image in your head. Now he only likes guys. It's true. He'll take what he can get. Yeah. But now I'm alone and find myself lying awake most nights. I don't need sleep anyway. I'm immortal and ageless. That's not a bad trade-off. That's pretty good. Be a little ugly and be immortal. Just put a, put a little mask on. That's there all. There you go. Surely. Phantom mask. Exactly. That's what I said. It just put the phantom mask on. You're fine. Surely, dot, 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 I suggested looking downward. One day you will find somebody to be with. Dot, dot, dot. No, Augie. What would any woman want with me? He asked, what does someone like me have to offer? I thought for a moment, trying to figure out something to what say to him. Matter? It doesn't. They're connecting. They're trying to But this is so irrelevant to the story. Like, who cares no, if he has, it has to show. Women? He has to show that even though he's ugly, disgusting, malformed, uh, an abomination of nature, Augie will still give him the time of day to listen about how he used to fuck. That's what this is about. Even though you have ugly friends who look like monsters and disgusting and malformed and gruesome, you want to listen to their fuck tales, okay? Uh, <laughs> why would it, what would any, and also, just so you know, I said gruesome because I saw gruesome comes up again. Uh, what does someone like me have to offer? I thought for a moment, trying to figure out something to say to him. Yes, he was gruesome to look at, but I have seen way worse things than him. You have? The way you acted, I don't think so. You're smart, talented, and kind. I'm sure someone could see into your heart and love you. I mean, you must like someone? <laughs> Monsters like me don't dream about love, Augie, he assured. <clears throat> they are meant to be hated, and so we hate back. Oh, Whoa. God. What a melodramatic guy. You know, if you're, lesson. if you're ageless and immortal, you think this guy could, could use his talents to... To take the business world by storm, make a lot of money, and then guess what? Women are gonna aren't gonna worry about what you look like. They're gonna look at the stacks, baby. That's right. That's right. I thought about what Zelda had done to him and wondered if getting rid of her would lift Hayward's curse. Hayward, if we rid Rumble Twaza of Zelda, would you be a man again? <laughs> would you be a man again? What is he then? If he's not a man, what is he? She took his dick. She took it away. Put it put it away. Put it in a little box. Put it in a little box. <laughs> That's why he turned into that. It started rotting. <laughs> Likely not, my friend. Hayward lowered his head and turned away from me. Once a demon, always a demon. Oh, he's a demon. 
He's a demon. He's a demon. <laughs> so how old are you exactly, I asked. I lost track, but I'm guessing I'd be around 80 or 90. My, you lost track of 80 or 90 years? I could see like 200. Yeah, like once it starts hitting the hundreds, maybe, but 80? Oh, man, how old am I? 80, 90? Oh, math's not my strong suit. Even though I only look 30. <laughs> I'm a demon. I'm, <laughs> I'm a demon. <laughs> And you can't die? I've tried to attempt death almost one million times. Holy shit. He attempted death. He attempted death. Not suicide, but I think death. To, I think today I'll attempt death. <laughs> well, about, about one million times, he replied. I've tried to end it all in more ways than one. Well, clearly, if he's done it a million times. Yeah. And yet I'm still here. I guess I'm to live etern eternity in this form. I couldn't imagine living the life that Hayward was living. He couldn't die, couldn't be loved, and he never aged. Well, that, that's two of those things don't sound that bad. No, I mean he could eat. He can. He could probably find women if he paid for yeah, them. So it's all right. That's fine. That, that's what I'm saying. Make a lot of money. You're in the business world. You're immortal. Uh, wisdom keeps accruing. You 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 reach higher and higher levels with age. You can make a lot of money, baby. You can have a lot of women. Mm -hmm. It's fine. <laughs> Just cover your face. Just be like the elephant man. Put the potato sack on. Put a little, oh little eye hole. You're fine. You're good. Uh, I had to make it up to him somehow, and I knew just how I was going to do it. He's going to get him a prostitute. <laughs> I would find him someone to share the rest of his life with. Oh, God. He's going to go and find him a Russian bride. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> someone who would, he would be happy to be around. Uh. This, however, would be hard to compete. To, or complete, I'm sorry. Not only because he, not only because he was hideous, but also because he was immortal. That's a hard one. Uh, I knew that giving him a mortal human... Wouldn't it be any uh, of any good? Because in 50 years or so, he would be alone again. In 50 years? I think women live a little longer than that. <laughs> uh, no, I had to find someone who would be immortal as well. I'll find him Zelna. And could Just love him. Put a little him. curse on her, too. Just put a little all. curse on her. Make her ugly, well, too. Sex bots last forever. That's right. There you go. That there you go. The we found answer. it out. Get, it. Get, him a, get him an anime sex bot. It's fine. Right. Japan's making them by the dozens. Uh, just the same as a mortal woman. Before this journey is complete, Hayward, I promise that you will be rewarded. I told you before, semicolon. I'm only doing this oh, for Oh, there Emily. we go. Drinky time. Oh, boy. He's only doing this for Emily. I attempt death every time I go to bed. <laughs> Can you imagine if he tells somebody you attempted death and were unsuccessful? He would look at you like you're a fucking <laughs> lunatic. What do you mean you attempted death? You oh, goon. <laughs> I attempted death. That's like something a foreigner would say. Tonight, I attempt death. <laughs> One million time. <laughs> I am ageless and immortal. I cannot find a woman who would love me. I Tonight, I attempt death. Time number one million. How old am I? 80, 90. I lose track. I lose track. But I attempt death one million times. That one I can guarantee you. I can count up to one million. I cannot count up to 80 or 90. Oh, man. Woo! Oh, I think it's your turn. Woo! Okay. Start right there. <clears throat> right there. Okay. Attempt death. <sighs> it was then that I realized that he totally admired Emily. Wow, he <laughs> put an exclamation point there. That he totally admired Emily! <laughs> I was going to ask him about it, but I didn't want to embarrass him, so I kept it to myself. I knew that I had to find someone just as great as Emily, but who was also immortal. I began to wonder if it were But possible. I thought he wanted Emily. He's just going to hand over his girl to him I, like that? So does he just... a fucking do beta male. Um, I, <laughs> I began to wonder if it were possible for Emily to have a crush on him. I myself liked Emily and hoped that someday she would admit to liking me as well. Possibly I don't think so. As much as a so. boyfriend... <laughs> like high school oh god she did she he just wants her to like him like him not just like not him. just like him it's a lila yeah. situation then again i wondered if it were possible for hayward to become jealous over it just then both hayward and i were knocked off balance by a shove that occurred from underneath the ship what what was that i asked as ha hayward helped me to my feet once more the shove occurred and we were both knocked to the deck again the feeling was as if someone were crashing into the side of the ship. It's probably Zelna. <laughs> I think it might the be Zelna, guys. The second time it happened, though, I heard a crack and then the sound of rushing water. Uh-oh. Hayward, I questioned. Did you hear that? Hayward wobbled to his feet and looked over the side of the ship. I joined him, and once I did, I wished that I wouldn't have done so. Okay. There, down in the water, was a whale pushing into the side of our ship. What? With each new shove, 
the ship began to crack until the side caved in and began taking on water. Uh Uh-oh. It began to take on water. Uh Uh-oh. We're sinking, I hysterically cried. From in the water, the whale had disappeared, and seconds later, Zelna rose from its surface and glanced I thought up she at could, us. I thought she wouldn't know that they were on a pirate ship. I know. What the fuck? All uh, these plans are, are moot. They're worthless. I may not be able to fly, she snarled, but I can swim. <laughs> from the side of me, Hayward appeared with a harpoon in hand and pointed it straight at Zelna. A harp- oh shit, he's gonna throw a harpoon at her. Dot, 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 dot. And you can There's four? There's four dots, guys! Four. Oh, shit! And you can sink, too, he triumphantly replied. Oh, my God. Zelda's glare brightened once she saw Hayward standing there beside me. It was as if seeing him had made her whole evil night complete. Wow, evil night. (laughs) But it's daytime. It's daytime. (laughs) Oh, wait, no, it is nighttime. I'm sorry. Yeah, the black sky. She described the the sky as black. Hayward, she purred. Purr. She, she purred at him? She purred. Doesn't that, doesn't that, <laughs> that's not what she said to him? <laughs> it's been Maybe too- it's an ellipsis <laughs> followed by a period. She added her ellipses. <laughs> she completed the sentence. It's been way too long since the last time I've seen you, dot, 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 as a man. Hayward snarled and placed his hand on the trigger of the harpoon. You did this to me, you witch. Your days are numbered. Zelna swam around in circles and splashed some water playfully into Hayward's face. Shoot me all you want, but you know I'm immortal just like you. Those harpoons might wound me, but they will never kill me, no matter how deep they penetrate my body. Oh, shit. Oh, boy. Here we go. As I stood silently next to Hayward, too... uh, Okay. Oh. Too afraid to say anything, I could tell that our ship was getting closer and closer to the water. I didn't know how much longer we had, but I was sick and tired of standing around doing nothing. I will give you another chance to come and join me, Hayward, she replied. Hayward threw down his harpoon and kicked it aside. Never! (laughs) Of course he said never! Of course he did. (laughs) What a cornball. It's like, what movie would that be from? Like, oh, it's like, kind of like, it's like, uh, it's like, like, you know, when uh, Obi Wan uh, Vader, Vader oh, to um, Obi Wan, no, like Vader to Luke is like you know join me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that kind cool. of situation. Also, um, uh, Slap Factory calculated how many times a day he would have to kill him. Okay, so he'd have to attempt killing himself twice a day, twice an hour every day, for the next sixty years in order to get to about a million. Oh. So that's pretty consistent. Mm. So every hour he's like, "Fuck this, <laughs> fuck this." <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, my god. Zona's green eyes then turned to me. How about you, grandson? She questioned. Would you like to come help your granny take over (laughs) Hummeltorn? Why would you want to? Why would she say granny? I don't know. A witch. A A witch. witch. (laughs) (laughs) Would you like to help your granny? (laughs) And also, why do we want to take over? This place sucks. This place has a prison. They have huts. But they Uh. also have diapers. It doesn't make any (laughs) fucking sense. What is so valuable about this place? Oh, my God. You've got annoying lemurs, pirates, with their dicks out. I must stress. Oh, God. Oh, Uh. okay. Um, I shook my head nervously and watched as Zelna swam back underneath the ship. Seconds later, Hayward grabbed my shaking hands and pulled me to my feet. Come on, he growled. We have to do something before the the ship completely sinks. I wasn't sure what to do next because... uh, no, don't say semicolon. Comma, because I had oh. never been in a situation like this before. Hayward most likely has, which is why I just followed him. Zelda <laughs> has disappeared underneath the water, but I was sure that she had something worse up her sleeve. She was probably dwelling under the ocean in front of, of in the form of a shark, just waiting for us well, to sink. That would look out because I then you get she three was a teeth. Whale. She was a whale. Okay. Was she still a whale? As far as I know, and then he said something about a shark. Why would you be a whale? It's foreshadowing. Be something, be something faster. It's foreshadowing. She should turn herself into a cruise missile and just take out the ship. Hayward had Torpedo. dragged me down below the deck to warn Emily and Lotus, but once we stepped into the hallway, the water level was already up to our knees. Hayward called out Emily's name a few times, and thankfully, they were all they were already up and out in the hallway before he could even call out her name for the fourth time. That's a lot. 
<laughs> Lotus was on Emily's shoulder like a scared little child as she trudged through the waters to make it over to us. Why is the ship sinking? She asked. <laughs> she didn't hear all that? No. They were yelling at each other. She didn't, and she didn't put an exclamation point either, so it's not like it would why be is, a screaming situation. Why is the ship sinking? Just Why is the ship sinking? Why is the ship sinking? You know. Um, Hayward held out his bony hand to get a hold of Emily oh and God. pulled her closer to his body. Zelna has spotted us and put a hole in the ship, he exclaimed. It seemed that after hearing that, Emily t took the lead and bolted back up the deck with Hayward and me following her. It had started to rain, making the deck slippery and even darker than it was before. But from what I could see, I spotted Emily pulling on the sails as if she were trying to tear them from where they had they were hooked. Emily, I shouted, what are you doing? Emily ignored me and continued to tear away at the sails. When they came loose, the wind caught a hold of them and started to push her off the ship. Oh, shit. Yeah. As soon as the high winds caught Emily, Lotus jumped off her shoulder and onto mine. <laughs> he just, he saved his own life. He's like, she's going to die. I got to get out of here. <laughs> we have to do something, Augie, cried Lotus, pulling away at my jacket. Pulling away at my jacket? He's taking his clothes off. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. Before I acted on acted out on anything, Hayward immediately lunged himself forward and grabbed a hold of Emily just as the wind was about to blow her overboard. Whew, it's a mouthful. The deck the of our ship was just touching the water now, and I knew that in any minute, in that in any, in any minute. Okay. Does she mean at any minute? Yeah. In any that, minute. That in any minute. In any, in any <laughs> we minute. We were going to have to abandon ship just when I thought that things couldn't possibly get any worse. See, she should have taken there. the bird. She can't fly. There, comma, from over the deck, comma, came three larger than life tentacles. Oh, oh shit. Three turned into four, four turned into five, and that's when I stopped counting and crawled <laughs> into a big wet ball, too petrified to keep watching. Wow, he is a wuss. He can't even look at his own death. Mm -mm. That's his grandma, too. That's I his grandma. Just say, Granny, I'll join you. That's bad. That's probably his best bet. He should have just joined her. He would have been fine. Yeah. Before I even had time to react, one tentacle came crashing onto what was left of the ship, causing it to split right down the middle. When I dared to look, I no longer spotted Hayward or Emily. It was just Lotus and I, all alone in one rainy, dark, horrifying nightmare with eight tentacles coming straight towards I thought me. we stopped at five. Mm -hmm. Now there's eight. This when the whole terrible. monster was visible, I realized that Zelna had turned herself into a giant octopus. Oh, no kidding. Oh, shit. Didn't expect that. <laughs> As I continued to sink... She should have just been an octopus to begin with. Yeah. She could have pulled the whole thing down instead of crashing into it. One of her huge, slimy tentacles wrapped itself around my body and lifted me far oh, up into shit. the air. The sea now seemed like a mile below, and I still couldn't spot Hayward or Emily anywhere. So, Augie, she snarled, let's have a family to family talk. A family to family, family talk? Oh, God. I didn't expect that. <laughs> let's just say, what, just say family discussion. Let's have a family let's to family, family talk. Let's have a family meeting. <laughs> let's have a family to family talk. Um, I glanced down into her two gleaming eyes and tried to move my arms, but I found that I could not. Zelna had her tentacle wrapped around me so tightly that one oh, squeeze no. tighter would suffocate me. At my side, Lotus was also wrapped into Zelda's... Zelda. He called her Zelda. <laughs> Have it. <laughs> Zelda's tentacles. <laughs> wow, this is sad. Look, this is a sad way to end my young life, you mind? <laughs> Sadder than dying alone in a fucking apartment that you hate. This is, look at this. Wow, this is a sad way to end my life. He whined. Period. Now back in quotations. Eaten by an ugly giant octopus. Why did she do it like that? Well, well we know why she described it that way. Because uh, the octopus is ugly and gruesome Lotus. and disgusting. I shouted. This is no time to be sarcastic. Wait, that was Who? him talking. When? That. There was no. Where is where was he? This the, the, he wasn't even in the sea. So eaten by an ugly giant octopus was Lotus speaking, not not Augie. Okay. Oh God. Um, Zelda, Zel Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> Just call her Zelda. Who Zelda, cares? Um. Actually, that's an insult to Zelda. It's true. Zelda pulled me closer to her and looked me right in the eyes. You grandson look just like your mother. I wouldn't dream of call, killing call you. Call him a bitch. She pulled me even closer as another slimy tentacle came up and gently brushed my cheek. I would consider eating the lemur, though. He'd be a wonderful appetizer. Why does everyone want to eat him? I don't know. There's two people now that wanted to eat him. They want to eat a furry creature. 
Lotus rolled his eyes at Zelma's remarks and at Zelma's re remark. <laughs> and continued to try and wiggle his way out of her grasp. All I ask, grandson, is for you to hand over your mother's ingredients to the spell. Her mouth opened wide, and I could see those file, file-like teeth. File? Octopuses have like, uh, like a beak. Just she doesn't have teeth to dro be dropped in. I couldn't. And she would have anything. to go underneath. She'd have to shove, shove him underneath into her. It's not like it's on the front. It's weird. Uh, then she doesn't suddenly, know what an octopus from, is. Out of nowhere, I saw a shadow pass from above me frantically. I gr I glanced up to see Hayward and Emily holding onto one of those loose sails as they began the blue right past me, but, but, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> this is boring. This is um, very boring. <laughs> this is an action scene that's so boring. Sorry to break up the family reunion so soon. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> uh, shouted Hayward, whooping out a machine. <laughs> What? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Give it to y'all. No, no, no. <laughs> what happened? Oh my god! Whipping out a machete. <laughs> what? <laughs> From his belt. I I swear to God, I thought you were gonna say machine gun. <laughs> That would have been way cooler. It actually, would have. That would have been way cooler. And running it through Zelma's tentacles. Okay, here. So here's like, a picture. Oh yeah, here. Let me show. Get that right in the it. screen. This is a picture of what's happening right now, guys. Oh my god. Very action packed here. Okay. Oh. I love how he's almost the same size as her. He couldn't have fit up on that ship. And also, the sails are in black. What the fuck is this about? Yeah, it sucks because you can't see what's really going you on. You want me to do the next page? No, I could do the next page. That's fine. How many pages oh. have you read? I haven't read I think, anything. I think I read... You read, like, like oh, five no, go pages. Ahead. Go ahead. It's my turn. I think she's drunk, guys. I am I think not. She might be drunk. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Zelna shrieked out in agony. So he's cutting into her tentacles mm -hmm. now, right? Oh, mm -hmm. shit. This is a violent book. Uh, in agony, as Hayward hacked away at her squid-like body. Well, it would be squid-like. It's an octopus. Um, don't know why you would compare an octopus to a squid. It's like comparing a fucking orange to an orange. An orange to a grapefruit. <laughs> it's like, what the... Why would you need to, explain, like, compare that? Uh, while Emily, Emily rushed over to help me. Zelna was not giving up, though. Quickly, she whipped me up into the air... With the last tentacle she had and swung me around like a rag doll as Emily... Damn, you, I think you would break your arms that way. Uh, as Emily hung there holding on for dear life. Wait, where is Emily? I don't know. Where, where, oh, oh, she's on the like the mast, right? She, I don't know. She was I, taking down the, the sails. I don't know. That's how much I care. I don't know. Uh, hold on, Emily. I cried trying to wiggle my arms out of Zelna's tentacle. It would probably be a bad idea if you got out of it now. If she's swinging you around, you're just going to go flying into the fucking abyss. Uh, before I could move out of her grasp, Hayward was standing there on her standing there on her head with his machete pointed towards the tentacle I was wrapped in. That's also not a good idea. She's spinning you around. He's going to cut off the tentacle. You, you are going zooming, baby. You are dead. You are dead meat. Uh, and cut it off her body. Okay, so he is now flying, fr just free flying across the air towards into the ocean or towards an island. Neither of which can end well for him. Uh, I remember falling into the water accompanied by Lotus. That wouldn't happen. He, he wouldn't survive that. Mm -hmm. uh, with the tentacle still wrapped tightly around our bodies. Once we went underwater, the tentacle finally came loose and I was able to grab Lotus's lifeless form and struggle to the surface what happened to lotus i don't know it didn't sound like anything does really anybody happened. remember <laughs> why he's lifeless if anything he should be happy that this happened yeah he doesn't like him uh the waves fought against me as i tried to search for hayward or emily but i couldn't see anything semicolon oh i couldn't see anything semicolon i'm telling you you can drink the cosmo no I'm no fine. i'm fine we're up to the next of bottle everybody this is how. This is how. I hate you. I'm not gonna like Yukon Jack anymore, which is a shame because I I really enjoy it. I've already spoiled Jim Beam for myself. <laughs> Little boy. Thank you. Hoppa! Woo! God. Can I have the water. Yeah. Thank you. Wash it down, babe. Wash it down. His lifeless body. Uh, 
There's a semicolon at. Even Zelna had disappeared. I didn't expect her to still be floating without any tentacles left in her body. Now, if she if he t cuts off the tentacles, does she then lose her arms? I, I bet they grow back. What are the rules? She could just lose her body parts. <laughs> you can't kill this woman. I didn't expect her to be still be floating. Uh, from a short distance away, I could see land, and I knew that if I got there, I would find I, I would be able to find help. With ar one arm, I stroked the water, and with <laughs> he stroked the water, <laughs> stroked it with one hand. And with the other, I held Lotus's body up high in the air. <laughs> he's he's swimming like this. He's holding him like like how Simba was held in the Lion King. Oh my God! <laughs> but by the scruff of his uh, of his uh, neck uh, to keep him from drowning. When I hit shore, I was so tired that I just ran for cover in the bushes and collapsed onto the ground. I came to when an annoying light began to shine into my eyes. I opened my closed eyelids to witness the sun shining brightly and noticed that my body was drenched in sand. I stood up on my feet and brushed myself off, realizing that Lotus was getting showered in the sand I was brushing away. He squirmed in his sleep and moved out of the way to dust his own self off. This is very exciting. That's why I'm yawning. Uh, come on, Augie, he whined as he continued to shake the sand from off his golden fur. I glanced around and wondered where we were. There was there were palm trees and large bushes surrounding us, with the shoreline just a few feet away. Come on, I replied. Let's try and find Emily and Hayward. Lotus jumped onto my shoulder and I meandered down to the shoreline to see if either of them had washed up. Last night's storm had washed up pieces of our ship along with a few maps and such. I don't think the maps would survive either. Uh, but neither Emily nor Hayward were tangled beneath the rubble. I began to look... Oh, God, we're almost done with the shabber. I'm just going to finish it out. Uh, through the remaining items and surprisingly came across my hat that had blown off of my head. It was chewed up and wet, but it was still a great souvenir to take home with me. Uh, just a damaged, shitty brown hat. Uh, suddenly, Lois began tugging at my jacket. Come on, let's search in the woods. I nodded and journeyed into the dark woods with him. I'm surprised he didn't say trekked. Hoping to find any signs of Emily or Hayward. So what do you think happened to Emily and Hayward? asked lotus after a while i shrugged my shoulders i'm not sure hopefully they washed up on shore or something last night then why wouldn't you stay on shore as i continued walking deeper into the dark woods with lotus on my shoulder it became it became too quiet it was so quiet that i could hear my own breathing semicolon oh yep yep these semicolons are very very rough very very rough indeed And if this gets too much for you, you I'm can quit. perfectly fine. Okay. Okay. I am. Okay. This is a hundred proof, baby. Ah! Ah! Okay. Uh, which scared me. I began to feel Lotus pulling at my jacket once more, urging me to turn around. Please, Augie, let's just go back. Hearing the fear in Lotus's voice was enough to turn me right around. My body shifted and I took my first step. Uh, that first step triggered a snare. Oh, God. Instantly, something tightened around my left ankle and I was flung up in the air, trapped and now hanging upside down like a wild animal. Lotus had jumped off of my shoulder once he felt my body being flung up in the air and was now standing in front of my face as I swayed back and forth. You look like a piñata, Augie, Lotus laughed. How would he know what a piñata is? He's a, a lemur from a distant land. Yes, it's very funny, Lotus. Although, he did say the, the shores of Mexico, so maybe he does yeah, know. That's true. Uh, now, could you please just get me down from here? The seriousness in my voice had caused Lotus to stop laughing and to crawl up my body to get my leg untied from the tree. As I hung there upside down, I glanced at the green sticker bush that was a few feet away from me green. and noticed... <laughs> yeah, the green that the leaves on it were standing uh, were starting to shake lotus i called out could you hurry up the bush continued shaking and it was then that i oh no that i shut my eyes and listened to the sound of footsteps getting closer semicolon oh boy oh my god the last two pages have three semicolons it's pretty good oh, i don't want to hate this drink i like it too much i feel okay Nothing yet. It'll hit you. It'll hit you. That's what I was saying last time. Whoo! And that was less. That was, let's see. Jim Beam was uh, 70 proof. Oh. So this is 30 more. Uh. 
he he would love to. <laughs> I love that he thinks of souvenirs when he's still trapped on this island and he's now washed up on shore around nobody. Do you think he's gonna find a bottle of rum in the sand? Yes. Just like Jack. Just like Jack. Or actually, one of the pirates will find it. Um, Fearing that it was Zelna, uh, closing, closing in to put a seal on my fate. Now we're up to. Oh my god. Lizard lizards. Fucking god, I want this to be over. This is so long! Chapter 6, two blizzard lizard heads. Oh my god. Christ, this is an ordeal and a half. <clears throat> the first chapter is the funniest chapter of this entire book, and then it all goes downhill from there. <laughs> um, when I opened my eyes again, I was right in front of the two sets of legs. The first pair was thin and covered in brown trousers. <laughs> oh my god, with the brown! <laughs> Complete with a pair of boots. The other pair looked exactly the same, except that they seemed more feminine. Ooh. When I Ooh, more <laughs> feminine, baby. When I glanced up at the rest of their bodies, bitch. I was relieved to find that it was Hayward and Emily looking down upon me. Why did they Zelda. snare them? I don't know. Why did they put a snare down? What? <laughs> uh Hayward, Emily, you guys are alive, I shouted. Lotus jumped into Emily's arms and hugged her while Hayward, who I could see had a black eye, took out his knife and cut me down. I hit the <laughs> ground with a loud plop, plop, and sat up <laughs> to brush make. the dirt from out of my hair. Both Emily's and Hayward's clothes were torn and dirty, but they were alive, and I was happy about that. What happened to you, Hayward? I asked. After getting He's just worried about Hayward. <laughs> you could look at his black <laughs> eye. Emily was up on the mast. She could have died. <laughs> Hayward, are you okay, you ugly <laughs> motherfucker? You ugly, gruesome piece of shit. Hayward touched his wound with his fingers and held out his other hand to help me up from off the ground. One of Zelna's tentacles managed to hit me in the face before I cut it oh, off. Oh, no. He replied. Emily brushed me off and handed me back my chewed-up hat. We were worried that you and Lotus had drowned. I thought the same, I said. That's a crappy sentence. I thought the same. <laughs> Even though Emily's hair was a mess and her clothes were torn, to me, she was still the most beautiful girl oh, I had ever lived. We get it. You want to fuck her. My God. As for Hayward, he's not, he not only saved my life, but he saved Emily's and Lotus's as well. I really hope that Hayward and Augie fuck, actually. I think that's a great <laughs> pairing. That's a greater ship than him and Emily, who Absolutely. doesn't know he exists. Um, so, where are we? I asked, continuing to glance around at my odd surroundings. Hayward took off his waterlogged map and shook some of the dampness. How out did of it. the map survive the water? Is it waxed? It's like Is a it cartoon. laminated? It's like a goddamn cartoon. It's fucking paper. It's parchment. That thing's not gonna survive. Oh, I like this word, the Blazarian jungle. Oh God. I guessed. So we are a here. Blazarian. Don't get overexcited, Augie. Hayward stuck his map back into his pocket. I thought it came out of his hat. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't even remember two sentences after. Oh, boy. <laughs> and, <laughs> she stuck and they back. patted me on the back. We're here to find two blizzard lizards. We're here to find two <laughs> blizzard lizards. My nose is running. Yeah? From laughing. I you want a tissue? No, I'm okay. No? I couldn't get over how excited I had become over knowing that we had arrived at our destination. I had never been excited over anything. Dot, 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 dot. That was until now. Maybe my excitement was finally showing, but why over this? Why over this dangerous expedition? When I couldn't think of any longer, I trailed behind Emily as we followed Hayward into the Blazarian jungle. Oh Everything God. was so much different than Rumble Twaza. The trees were not as green and the sounds were much creepier. I don't know. Rumble Twaza seemed pretty brown to me. <laughs> <laughs> you were thinking of the pants. The pants and the hats and the clothing. Oh, God. I don't know. Why, anyway. why, so are the trees dying? Why are they not as green? Because because the wizards are turning oh, all wizard, the trees. The wiz the wizard, <laughs> lizards, blizzards now. The blizzard wizards. After a while of walking, I couldn't help but begin to wonder just how we were going to catch a blizzard lizard. Oh, You don't even know what good. it is! Wait, wait, this is good though. She called it a blizzard with a capital B, lizard, lowercase l. Oh my god. So blizzard <laughs> is, his first, is his first name. <laughs> Hello, Blizzard. Or maybe she's talking about Blizzard that made Overwatch. Oh my god. She's talking about the company. Uh, she wants to be respectful. Hey, word. Just how, hey, word. <laughs> just how does one catch a Blizzard lizard? 
did it again. <laughs> I, God. She keeps using the same words. The same words she makes up. She couldn't even say, like, how do we catch one of these lizards? Yeah, no. <laughs> how do we catch a blizzard lizard? Well, a blizzard lizard is very difficult to catch. Where does one find a blizzard lizard? Well, a blizzard lizard has, can be located in these blizzarded, uh, blizzard oh lizard God. locations. So stop making me laugh. I can't, I can't find my, my sentence here. <laughs> That's a good thing. Maybe you'll skip ahead. Maybe we'll be done with this faster. They have a colony that's not too far from here, he stated. Have you ever caught one before? I asked. Hayward laughed. I'm a trekker. Of course I have. <laughs> I'm a trekker. Hey, come on. I'm a trekker. <laughs> come on now. Come on. We made it to a large cave before Hayward turned around and stopped us from going any further. Why couldn't Hayward farther, just do this? Excuse me. Why couldn't they just get Hayward to know. catch these things and they would he, stay on the he, island and be fine? He, he placed his finger over his lips to shush us and started rummaging through the small leather satchel that he had hanging over Is it shoulder. brown? <laughs> what color is it? I think it's brown. <laughs> As I stood there by opening up the cave, I could hear far distant clawing sounds echoing, echoing from inside. I had been excited about being in the Bolzerian jungle, but now I Why? wasn't as excited anymore. Uh, Why were you excited? Oh, about he didn't like Rumble Plaza. What's so <laughs> he, great about this? Place? This, is, this is just another island, and uh, with less less civilization. Why would you like it more? I don't know. The, maybe because I guess people aren't there. He's so oh anti-social. maybe yeah. He's he hates people. The longer he's around, I everybody. stood there waiting for Hayward to get out of wherever he went into his bag for, the more I want to I wanted to turn around and head home. Wait, what? What? Didn't he just say he was excited to be there? <laughs> yeah, he wants to leave! Just like that! Wait, can you read that again? Yeah, like, wait, wait, wait. He, he's right. like, I love this place. Oh, I can't wait to get home. Okay. I had been excited about being in the Blazarian jungle, but now I wasn't as excited anymore. The longer oh, okay. I stood so there it, waiting it for Hayward to get out of where he was at, the more I wanted to turn around and head home. He's so... He, he needs instant gratification at yeah, at all he's times. Like a child. He is like a child. He needs, he needs amusement. constant amusement, constant stimulation. Otherwise, he's not interested. Okay. This is fantastic. I hate it. <laughs> when are we going home? Man, I'm so excited to go there. When are we going home, guys? <laughs> this place rules. When am I going home? It's like going to Disney World, oh and you're like, God. oh, this place is so much fun. I can't wait to ride the roller coasters. When are we going home, guys? Mom, when are we going home? When are you taking us home, Ma? <laughs> okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, once we get inside, he whispered, we must stay quiet because lizards hate loud noises. If, if anything, they'll scurry away, right? I nervously asked. Emily shushed me and turned around to make sure that her point had gotten across. If you must know, she whispered, the lizards are poisonous if they bite you. We need oh, to be shit. quiet so we don't get we don't scare them. Okay. Mm. This is tough. <laughs> All I could think about as we crept deeper and deeper into the cave was the thought of one of those lizards sinking their teeth into every part of my body. Something Ooh, I just part. couldn't understand was why my mother had chosen such a dangerous animal to add into her spell. Come on, mom, come on. Come on, mom. Mom, choose, choose something easy like fucking rice, <laughs> grass, dirt, something that I can find easily that the witch can also find. Eventually, Hayward turned around and placed his finger up to his list to shush us once more, making it oh, clear God. that we were probably close. Why don't they just leave Augie back? I don't just see. leave him like... You obviously can't shut the fuck up. Go stand on the beach. You loved it there. He, Just leave him there. And I know, take care he's of not it. happy, so. No, he wants to go home. Well. <laughs> he's excited and he wants to go home. We came around a small bend and Hayward forced us behind a boulder. I didn't understand what we were doing, but I was not about to open my mouth and get myself bitten. Instead, I watched as Hayward threw off his bag once again and began rummaging through it. Turning my oh, attention what, no. away from what Hayward was doing, I glanced in front of the boulder to spot a small cavern like lake. With over 500 red and white spotted lizards. Wait, 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 wait. Hmm. I, what? Hold on a second. I glanced in front of the boulder to spot a small cavern lake. Oh, wait, a cavern wait, lake? Wait, wait, wait. Is he looking inside the boulder and there's a cave? I glanced in front of the boulder to spot a small, comma, cavern lake, comma, with over 500 red and white spotted litters, litters, litters. <laughs> lizards laying all over the opposite side of the water. Dude, you can't have a That's cavern a long... lake out in the open. They were medium sized. Oh, God. And grotesque looking. <laughs> of course they're <laughs> grotesque. Nothing is cute in this story. Everything's disgusting. But that did not pacify my fear for them. 
The longer I stared at them, the more I wanted to bolt straight out of the cave. I turned my glare back to Hayward, who was p placing thick leather gloves over his hands. Brown, by the way. Brown That's gloves. Right. Brown. While Emily was untangling a bundle of rope from out of his bag. What are we going to do now? I softly asked. Hayward handed me a pair of gloves and an end of the rope before gathering to his feet. Just like hog hunting, Augie, he replied. <laughs> hog hunting! What? What? <laughs> Where did that come from? Hog hunting! Well, that's also a lost Maybe he's reference. talking about... What? That's oh, a, yeah! That's, hunting that's the a lost reference. Well, maybe, maybe, I don't think she's watched Lost. Huh? I, I, don't think she, I don't think she can watch Lost yeah, and understand it. I'm going to purchase Just like myself. hog hunting, Augie. And by hog, <laughs> I mean cock. <laughs> Just like hog hunting. You tap your foot twice. If the man taps too, he's interested, Augie. Oh, God. I'm going to perch myself on the rocks that are above the lizards, throw down the rope, and snag two of them. What's my job? I asked. To stay hidden with Lotus and Emily. <laughs> I work up demanded. Oh and also, I'm sorry I keep relating this bad back to cocks and hogs and dicks and penises. But... <laughs> As if Augie could hog hunt. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Why, why is he relating this to something he's never done before? Just like hog hunting, Augie. What's that? This is too dangerous for the three of you. I was completely fine with that. With what Hayward had told me to do and didn't argue. Quietly, he crept over to a nearby rock with an old potato sack in hand. How did he get that? <laughs> I don't know! What? Is it his bag? <laughs> he should put it on his face so he won't be so gruesome. And climbed to its very top. All that was left to do now was wait, dot, dot, dot. Hayward took his end of the rope and tied it into a noose before... Oh, a noose. Oh, shit. He's oh, gonna, boy. He's going to attempt death again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, not right in front of him. Before dangling it over the herd of lizards that were crawling about. I don't think, you've, I don't think I've ever heard the words when herd of lizards. When he dropped his end down towards the lizards, the noose immediately hooked one of them. I saw She's Emily smile them. at Hayward's triumph, and we continued to watch as he pulled up our first growling and angry ingredient to our spell. As I stood there watching Hayward, I felt Emily bump my shoulder. Augie, pull the rope, she ordered. <laughs> The end of my rope had begun to fill with sweat as my hands perspired as the thought of having that thing come coming over to our side. Now, all right, she just said sweat, and then she said perspired. We get it. He's sweaty, guys. He's sweating. Guys, he's perspiring. He's sweaty. Um, what, else, what other words can you even use? That's it. Those are all of them. Wet. <laughs> wet. He's wet. Also, there's an image. Let me show oh, you the image. Yeah, that's true. This is, guys, this is a blizzard lizard, okay? You guys ready for this? Look at that. That's Augie with a blizzard lizard. He looks so cool. Such a cool guy. I guess it's a blizzard lizard, right? It ha It would have to be. It just looks like... Did it look like a Pokemon before? Was I, am I wrong? What I know what you're like? talking about. It looked like a Neopet, but I don't think... That, that's probably something else. Something, I think but it was they, something else. These things look like... Uh, they look like Airhead. I've compared it to it before. frog. <laughs> <laughs> that's just the he white... He looks like a baby with a beard. <laughs> he does. And the beard... You know what the beard looks like? Do you guys remember those hats you could buy that came with the beard that you could put over your face? It's so like... To, to, to like guard it from the from the cold that's what it looks like it looks like he has a hat that comes with a beard attached already to keep him warm it's she can't draw beards is what i'm trying to say when i didn't emily yanked the rope from out of my hands and pulled the growling lizards towards us lotus was at emily's side helping her pull the rope while i just stood there too afraid to help out oh we know that oh we get it you're scared you're scared of everything <laughs> when the spotted lizard was close it it snapped at my legs <gasps> But I moved out of the way and oh, just God. in the nick of time. Thank God. Once Emily had a hold of the blizzard lizard, she picked up a large heavy stone and began bashing it over its head. Oh. Immediately killing it. Whoa! Don't we need its yeah. head? Isn't that the ingredient? Was it? Is the, is, it was the head of a blizzard lizard. Hold on. Oh. Let, let's, guys, let's take a little step back here. Uh, I'm pretty sure that we needed the head. This is a children's book. This is a way. children's book where you kill a lizard with a rock and smash its fucking head in. What was the age group? Like Two blizzard was... lizard heads. Oh, you're right. So she's destroying the ingredient that she needs. What was the age group? Like 12? Like 4 to... What was it? 4 to 10? Something Maybe. like that? So 10-year-olds um... are reading that the... To kill, kill the fucking lizard. And uh, also, my father was a slave... And ugly people need to be reminded of how they look <laughs> at all times. That's Those are the morals of the story so far, okay? Green slime 
emerged from the side of its cranium as she Jeez. removed the noose and handed it to me. So she's not only hanging them, but she's also fucking just destroying their heads. Your turn? Oh, yeah. The top of the page? Yes. <clears throat> now, can you make yourself useful and throw it back to Hayward? I could tell that Emily was getting angry with me as the minutes passed. She's been angry every scene she's been in. Sometimes she made me so angry that I felt like treating her just as she was treating me, but knew that two wrongs didn't make her right. Oh, that's He's, a lesson learned. Lesson learned. He's a good guy. <laughs> uh, I pulled the rope from her grip. Of course I can. Before I could even begin begin to swing it over my head, Emily snatched it back and pushed me aside. Augie, she laughed. I wouldn't risk losing the rope if my life depended on it. I hated when she became, became sarcastic, and it r never really bothered me up until now. Her sardonic attitude was... She looked that up. Oh, she did. Sardonic attitude was beginning to become a regular thing with her, and I just wish she would be honest instead of making me out to be some sort of idiot. Well, I think she is being honest on that one. She placed the other end of the rope into my hands and began to swing the noose above her head, ready to throw it back to Hayward. When she let the noose go, the force of it had been so strong that it caused my end to be <laughs> ripped from my hands. What? Whipping out the SAT words. Oh, Oh, yeah. <laughs> This is a person from Remedial English, by the way. Yeah. All I could do was watch in horror as a noose and the remaining rope flew across the small lake. Yeah, that's quite a throw. Landing right in the middle of where the lizards were basking. Some scattered and others stayed where they were. The angriest of them all, excuse me, was Emily, of course. Guys, she's angry, just so you know. The look on her face was, if, was as if she wanted to kill me and I wouldn't have blamed her after what I had just done. She grabbed me by the shoulders and threw me up against the wall full of rage. She is an Amazon woman. She's grabbing yeah. him by the shoulders and putting him up against the wall. She'd kill me. She'd kill you and she might eat you. Yeah, I was just going to say, she, she might, just might eat She me. might eat you. That's she right. might be hungry. Uh, now look what you've done, Augie. She she was whispering, but her voice still sounded very... Look what you've done, Augie. <laughs> Augie, look what you've done. She sounds very angry. Uh, now, now you're going to go get it back when i heard emily demand that i go and retrieve the rope my body completely froze with fear isn't he holding the other end can you just tug it what if something happened how did it okay so i'm i'm, I'm imagining he threw both uh sides of the rope how did he manage that if he's like lassoing it right that's what i'm assuming because it's a noose so he must have gone like oh i was supposed to hold it how do you manage to throw both ends of a rope if you're trying to lasso? I don't get that at all. Or maybe he went like this and then he just like let go. I, I don't know. I'm trying to imagine how this would work. <laughs> it just seems like he would be like, huh. oh shit, I was supposed to hold it. Damn it. I fucked up. Oh god. Uh, when I heard Emily demand that I go retrieve the rope, my body completely froze with fear. What if something happened? What if the lizards bite me? Oh god, Emily what a wimp. <laughs> Emily didn't seem to care because she forced the leather gloves tightly over my hands and pushed me towards the lake. So one moment she's talking about how important he is, the next she's like, go fucking die. Go go risk death. Uh, the lake was narrow enough to jump over. Imagine if everybody in Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings just told Harry to do everything. Yeah. They're like, Harry, I know it's year one. You gotta fight Voldemort. You've gotta you gotta kill him. You gotta go fight him. Uh I know he's trying to attack you, and I'm a stronger wizard. You gotta do it. You gotta do it, Harry. Or if they're like, Frodo, we're gonna go to Mount Doom. We need you to hold off this standing army of orcs <laughs> while you have the ring. Yeah, his little His little, little body. You gotta hold them off by yourself, Frodo. Okay? You're very important, Frodo. You gotta fight off this army of orcs. Of Urukai. You gotta do it. Uh, let's see. Emily didn't seem to care because she forced the leather gloves. Uh, the lake was narrow enough to jump over, but I was worried about making any sort of noise. From where I came, Lotus was watching. God, this is making me tired. This is no. boring oh. as fuck. Lotus was watching me as if he were trying, were watching some sort of horror movie, where you don't know whether to hide your face or to be brave and watch. As I kept glancing back, why didn't he just get Lotus to do this? Lotus is small. He's more spry than he is. He could just jump in, jump out. He'll be fine. And if he gets bit, oh, well, get another lemur. They were born into slavery. <laughs> I could tell that Emily didn't have any sort of qualm about, that's another nice high school word, about sending me off to a certain to certain death. Because all she kept doing was motioning me to get a move on. When I jumped over to the other side, my anxiety level rose 
uh, at the sight of all those spotted and hungry lizards lying only a few feet away. From up on the rock, from up on the rocks, <gasps> Hayward grabbed my attention. You're yawning oh, too. God. This is so boring. Uh, grabbed my attention, causing me to stop and glance up at him. Tiptoe very quietly, he whispered. Slowly, I crept forward into the belly of the beast and gently s- stepped over each red, slimy lizard. By the way, they were white in the illustration. Mm-hmm. So she made this decision after she had already drawn them. I think that's the thing. She when when she drew a lot of these pictures, she drew them before she even wrote the story, and oh, then she God. just started like writing it before, like oh, you know, looking over her drawings. Yeah, she she has no yeah. consistency. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, finally, I reached the rope and stood there looking back at Hayward. From the rocks, he mimicked how to pr- proceed on picking it up. All it was to me was slowly bending at the knee and grabbing it before any of them knew what happened. Just fucking run in, grab it, and run back. After a few deep breaths, I began to feel something crawling over my feet and glanced down to see about ten of them crawling around me. Spiders. I knew... What's that? Spiders. No, the, the lizards. Lizards. Uh, I knew that if I stuck my hand down there... There now, I what? I knew that if I stuck my hand down there now, I was certain to have it bitten off. Don't make any sudden movements, Hayward silently warned. How would he hear this if it's this far away? As the moments passed, I began to wonder when someone was going to do something about saving me. As the lizards continued to pile up on my feet, my body began to sweat with fear. <laughs> How attractive. Slowly, I glanced down at them, taking notice that one of the lizards had its body wrapped around the noose. Uh, it was... It was the last one that we needed, and I knew that there was only one way of escaping. Quickly, I kicked the lizards off of me and grabbed the rope as I began to run. Hayward shouted my name, but I just ignored him as I ran across the lake and back towards Emily and Lotus. Guys, I had the last lizard, I shouted. The angry serpent snapping at my... The angry serpent snapping at my leg? Serpent. Did she just call a lizard a serpent? She did. I held the rope tightly and watched as both Lotus and Emily turned and ran towards the exit. I didn't understand what was going on. That was until I heard the fast pitter-patter of scurrying feet. Aw, pitter-patter. Aw, it's adorable. And spun around to see the whole clan of lizards running behind. Why were they... They were slithering behind. They were slithering. They're they're serpents. Lizards are serpents. (laughs) Uh, My pace quickened and I could see the opening of the cave. They were in a cave. They called it a cavernous lake, but he was like by a boulder. What the... What? What? She didn't illustrate much, so we don't really know. It's true. She just made it up as she went. My pace quicker than I could see the opening of the cave getting closer and closer. Oh, excuse me. Both Lotus and Emily were nowhere to be found, and I also began to wonder what happened to Hayward. As the opening became even closer, became even closer, I could see the branch of a tree hanging right above it, and I knew that if I couldn't reach it, I would be safe. That if I could reach it, I would be safe. My legs braced themselves as the opening became nearer, and then I closed my eyes and jumped. Do you want to read the next one? How long is this chapter? My fucking... I know, her chapters are very inconsistent. They're very inconsistent. (laughs) The next chapter is called The Inconvenient Truth. Oh, it sure is. (laughs) Oh, Christ (laughs) almighty. This is so bad. I want to eat something. I know, I'm hungry too. This is making me hungry. This is making us very hungry. It's just such an ordeal. When I did, I felt someone grab my arm, and I opened my eyes to see Hayward hanging triumphantly. She likes that word, too. <laughs> from, from the what? tree. Oh. When I glanced down below me, I saw thousands of those poisonous lizards running right below my dangling feet. Dust was flying everywhere, and I could only close my eyes again until they all passed. When the coast was clear, Hayward dropped me, and I plummeted to the ground below. Now face to face with the angry blizzard lizard. Let me tell you something, guys. If you're making a chapter that's supposed to be action-packed and your audience is yawning trying to get through <laughs> it, you might want to rewrite it. You yeah. might, you might want to make it a little more action-packed. I feel like I'm falling asleep listening to this shit. You're sweating in here. It's you're like, sweating? This is, it's, this it's is the alcohol. This is making me sweat. It's alcohol. You want me to open a window? It's probably no, cold I'm, outside. I'm okay. No? Right. When the coast was clear, Hayward dropped me and I... Oh, I already read that. <laughs> ha! Uh, Don't go backwards. Go forwards. Before he could sink his teeth into my arm, Hayward bashed his head in with a rock and threw his body into his brown sack. <laughs> he killed another... Oh, <laughs> shit! His brown, brown sack. sack. I don't like that description. Good going there, Augie. He... Oh, angrily shouted. 
I thought that was like a Is good he reprimanding thing. him? Uh, you could have killed us all with that little stunt. I thought he said slut. <laughs> <laughs> with that little slut. That little slutty it lizard. Like it. He you was little slut. <laughs> Hayward swung his leather bag over his shoulder it's and brown, violently brown leather bag. pulled me to my feet, angrily snatching the rope out of my hands. The what brown was I rope. supposed to do? Stand there and sacrifice myself? Hayward glanced down at his noose and swiftly put it around my neck. Whoa! Whoa! He's going to attempt death on him. Me towards oh, him shit. with his monstrous strength. <laughs> Wait, with the noose around his neck? Yeah, he's going to kill him. He's going to break his fucking scrawny neck. He's gonna kill a guy. I told you not to move, Augie. You better just pray that Emily is all right. <laughs> Hayward led me into the jungle, and we began our search for Lotus and Emily. I walked behind Hayward as he mumbled to himself the whole way through, hoping that Emily was mumbling all right. Mumbling what? I want to know what he's mumbling. <laughs> Mumble Twaza. <laughs> I didn't even want to think about what Hayward would do to me if something <gasps> bad happened to her. From a short distance away, I witnessed the bushes moving and grabbed a hold of Hayward, who immediately shoved me away. Would you stop, Augie? He demanded. From his leather no, bag... The, no, he's the angry character. Oh, my God. From his leather bag, he whipped out a Swiss army knife that was so sharp what? and thick that it could gut an elephant in sex. I don't, Se seconds. I, in sex? <laughs> If you fucked an elephant, that's what you use. I Why, wait, a Swiss, a Swiss army knife isn't that sharp. At least the ones I've Apparently seen Apparently you can gut an elephant you can in gut an elephant seconds. in sex. In sex. In sex. <laughs> Someone's got their mind in the gutter. Hey. <laughs> don't shame me. <laughs> <laughs> don't shame me for what I want to do to an elephant. <laughs> Hey, you never know what he want, what he might want to do to an elephant. <laughs> I know Augie's an odd duck. He he likes oh different things. Oh my god! What? He held it in front of him and began to approach the green and brown bush. <laughs> what? <laughs> green and brown? Oh god! Is it dying? He has. She has no other the, words. And you know what? <laughs> if you think about it, it makes sense why she uses that. <laughs> Those are the only, only colors, colors she uses on the book. It's so It, it was grotesque. right in front of us the whole time. Green, brown, yeah. and black. It's so grotesque. It looks like vomit and poop. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Else. That's why she uses it. That makes perfect it's sense. Crap, it's a crap cover. Oh, my God. Vomit and crap. <laughs> oh, God. Um, Where was I? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what you were reading. Oh, the green and brown. The green and brown. Right at its opening, he moved aside some of the branches with the blade, and to our surprise, Lotus jumped out from it and into the tree that was hovering above us. Hayward sighed and hovering? put the knife away. <laughs> uh, finding Emily huddled safely in the bush, I approached her and held out my hand to help her up, but she just pushed me away in an angry rage. You almost killed us, Augie. <laughs> No, the second character has to be angry at him. I knew Emily was angry with me. It was <laughs> She only has been this entire story. And he said it twice. Um, oh, it wasn't my God. hard to tell when em Emily was angry. Her cheeks always lit up like a red traffic light. Ew. That's a terrible description. <laughs> why is she why is she shy? What? And her eyes became as big as saucers. This is saucers. Terrible. Hayward put out his hand to help her up, and she surprisingly accepted, allowing him to pull her to her feet. I think she read saucers somewhere, and she thought that it was an apt mm -hmm. description. Mm -hmm. Emily wasn't on her feet five minutes when she pulled me to her face by grabbing the collar of my shirt. Oh, she here comes kissed the abuse. me. She kissed me deeply. This is the this is like the master slave type oh. of abusive behavior. Mm -hmm. She N like he like that. He does. That's he like why that. he likes her so much because she's so abusive. Oh, hit me, baby. One Beat. More time. Are you? Oh, oh, mistress, are you angry again? Are you mad at me again? Can you gut me like an elephant with a Swiss Army knife <laughs> during sex? <laughs> oh, <laughs> next time you better listen to us when we tell you something or else. It's it's snarled. it's not a good thing that he's attracted to her now because he's gonna expect this during the relationship That's if true. it ever works. Or else what? I daringly asked. Or, oh, whoa. or else we'll make we'll leave you as bait to make our escape. But I thought it was important. I I don't know. I guess it's not. Okay. Empty it's like threat. just think of it's Harry a, Potter being. Used please like this. be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> You're, this relationship is so different from when we weren't dating. You're not mad anymore. <laughs> With that, she pushed me down into the dirt, and when I glanced up again, I noticed Hayward's hand reaching out to help me up. 
but this is like I think him and Hayward are going to They're going to gonna get it on. Oh, absolutely. When I, when With that I, Swiss Army knife. Right, this is the third time that she's saying when uh, on my feet again or on her feet again. When I was on my feet again, Hayward scurried When was to, he on the floor? Scurried to Emily's <laughs> side and dusted the back off of back of her jacket off. Ugh, Their brown it's a jacket. Terrible her brown and green Sex. disgusting jacket come he began oh, it's getting dark and we must find shelter for the night lotus... wasn't it just daytime apparently uh lotus jumped down onto my shoulder from the tree branch he had been hiding in and cried out in excitement finally a camping trip oh god <laughs> jesus christ no hayward snapped it's not good that we wasted our time all day in that cave Zelma is only a few days away from invading the island, and we need all the time we can get to a make the spell. A few days? She was, like, right there. She mm -hmm. found their ship immediately. I don't know, man. Lotus shriveled up into a ball behind my back and stayed quiet as I began to follow Hayward and Emily deeper into the jungle. It seemed as if we had walked for hours before we came across a small open spot beneath some trees. Uh... Night had finally arrived, and we were nestled safely away from any danger. At least that's what Hayward kept telling me. <laughs> Hayward had started a fire, and after Hayward, a while... Hayward, 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 Hayward. He fell asleep with Lotus at his side. Oh, God, it's like... It doesn't feel good for the mouth <laughs> to say these I words. I tried to fall asleep, but couldn't. Not with all the weird noises <laughs> sounding <laughs> off in the distance. Someone heard, he heard weird. an elephant being weird gutted noises. with a knife. While I sat there in the firelight, I spotted Emily sitting wide awake against one of the trees. She quickly glanced over at me before turning back towards the fire. Since I couldn't sleep, I decided to scoot over beside this her. This is when they become closer. Hoping to finally connect. Oh, oh yeah. She glared at me and More I began to one. shake her head as she giggled uncontrollably. What? what? I bet she what? found the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Why is she giggling? Listen, wait, wait. You crack me up, Augie Atwell. She's drunk. I'm telling you, she's drunk. I'm what is she laughing about? I'm sorry about today. I apologize. Emily nodded and patted me on the back. I accept. What the fuck? What? She's got to be drunk. I just said that. That's what I'm saying. She's stealing. Again. Like, like everything else she's ever done. She found the room in the same. I glanced back at Hayward thinking about the possibility of Emily liking him. I didn't know what I would do if it were true, but finding out wasn't going to hurt either. Emily was going on about the way Lotus was sleeping until I rudely cut in. Do you like Hayward? Emily glanced at me <laughs> as if I had two heads and paused. He's nice and helpful. Why wouldn't I like him? Emily didn't seem to get what I was asking, but I didn't stop on trying to get my main point across. It's a weird sentence, too. He'd make an exceptional king, don't you think? Emily looked at me and laughed. That's sweet, Augie, but I already like someone else. I'm just going to make her drunk. <laughs> <laughs> don't, she, she cannot say she likes Augie. <laughs> no, it's bullcrap. She cannot. There's no, no reason no, she's at all. she somewhere else. Yes. She, if she says she likes Augie, this is such a self-serving bullshit book. There's no way someone would like this wimpy fucking useless uh. character. My heart sank in my chest when I heard this. Neither myself nor Hayward was going to catch a chance with her, now that she admitted to liking another guy. Uh-oh. It was likely that her father had picked someone out for her, which would make sense, seeing that she was going to be a queen someday. Or I maybe it's a Helga situation where she does like him, but she pretends not to. And, and treats him calls like crap. Him, calls him football head. That's right. Could I be. mostly felt sorry for Hayward since Zelna had ruined his chances of having a relationship with any girl. But how old is this guy? Like Who? Hayward. He said he was like 80 or 90. He said he couldn't keep track. So, so he's going to marry a girl, like a young girl? He can marry anyone he wants with how ugly and gruesome Aww, he is. Yuki's on your uh, robe. Aw, Yuki. Just then, the piercing sound of stomping occurred. That's piercing? The, it is. Piercing and stomping are one and the same. Causing the ground to shake and for Hayward and Lotus to awake. Hayward sat up and rubbed his malformed face. <laughs> <laughs> malformed. Before looking over at Emily. Oh, God. Lotus grabbed hold of my shirt and covered his eyes with his paws. What is that? He screeched. The stomping continued to shake the ground as Hayward took out his golden spyglass and looked ahead. <laughs> he only had it up to his face for three seconds. She counted, I'm sure. <laughs> when he quickly threw it back into his bag and warned us to run. Hayward dodged in front while Emily and I stayed behind him as Lotus kept 
holding onto my shirt. The stomping became louder and louder, making it clear that whatever was making the noise was right behind us. The crashing of trees began to occur. And it's a it dinosaur. That I turned only to see the form of a humongous rhino charging straight toward us. How big is this rhino? It's got to be massive. It's, he's knocking down trees, right? That's right. Do, what the fuck? Do rhinos live in this jungle? I asked, <laughs> gasping for air. Hayward turned his head slightly as he continued to run. It's Zelma! Faster oh and faster, God. we bolted through the jungle trying to escape the wrath Why of Why is she always the slowest fucking animal every single I, time? I She's know. a giant rhino, <laughs> a giant elephant. Be something fast. I'm glad they always remind me that Hayward is ugly. I might accidentally start to like him. <laughs> You've got to be reminded that he's malformed <laughs> at after, all times. After a few And seconds, gruesome, don't forget gruesome. That's right. Disgusting. After a few more seconds passed, I heard Emily whistle loudly, but for whatever reason, I was not sure of. She's going to bring okay. the bird in, and As that our defeats path the purpose. Clear, I could see that we were headed towards a cliff with a, uh, a cliff with a drop off so deep that you would die. What? Die, On this island? You would die of fright before even hitting the ground below. Then. Damn, girl, you're reading a lot of pages. I'm going to finish that sentence. Let me, let me then. Do from high up in the air, a dark shadow passed from over our heads. It's the bird! Semicolon. Its screeching cry began louder than the stampede. God damn it. There we go. Damn it. Damn it. It's the bird, right? It's, it's Edgar, the bird. Edgar. Edgar. Edgar was the guy, the butler, who took the cats and sent them away <laughs> in Aristocats. Oh. <laughs> Listen to this Disney knowledge. <laughs> I know, isn't that terrible? When you have a lot of cats. She's cat obsessed. <laughs> That's why we got three. Um I you don't listen out to two. Don't listen to what she has to say. She's Here. a liar. <clears throat> but it's true. I'm responsible for having so many I cats. I just picked out Yuki. He she did. I, I picked out the others and I'm regretting it every day of my life. <laughs> uh it's screeching cry becoming louder than a stampede. When I glanced upward, to my surprise, I witnessed Edgar flying above us. So now we th this has completely defeated the fucking purpose of not taking the bird in the first place. Because now we're taking the bird. You should have just taken the bird instead of the ship. You wouldn't have crashed. It makes no sense. The whistle that I heard earlier must have been to call the oversized bird to our rescue. I had always been frightened of his size, but at the moment, I couldn't have been happier to see him. Hayward took out his long rope from his leather bag. <laughs> He's got a lot of stuff He's in there. He's got a lot of stuff in that bag. He can fit everything in there. <laughs> this long leather He's rope. like a magician. I know. It just it, it has an infinite uh, capacity. Uh... And through the end of it up to Edgar's foot. How are they doing this? How are they lassoing this this bird? Know. As Edgar f began to fly higher, Hayward held on and grabbed Emily's hands to lift her from off the ground. When I reached the cliff, uh, Lotus grabbed or Lotus jumped up to catch the rope, and I was left alone, trying to make contact with Hayward's hand that was <clears> reaching <throat> out for me. Come on, Augie! He shouted repeatedly. Grab my hand! I stretched my body as high as I could. <laughs> We could not reach Hayward's fingers. Zelna was only seconds away from plowing me over the cliff. And I began to plowing. accept... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he would fall off of it. I don't think he would be plowed anywhere. <laughs> I, it, his decision would be either to get mauled by the ry rhinoceros or to jump to his death. Uh, Zelna was only seconds away from plowing me off the cliff. And I began to accept my dark fate. It was then that Hayward made a huge loop in his rope and cattle tied me around their waist. What? Ordering Edgar to, to start flying higher. How did he do it? With the same rope? <laughs> what? I, they threw rope. They have new rope. How much rope it, is in here? How much rope is in this like, bag? Like the Indiana Jones of endless rope. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're all dressed like Indiana Jones. Uh, I got my feet off the ground just in time before Zelda... It was a long rope. <laughs> dragging on the ground they just cut pieces off like crows <laughs> it just, just keeps going keeps going oh my god uh Zel before zelna could plow right into me with her razor sharp horn was that the, the second time she that's said the plow? same time she talked about plowing 
As I got higher and higher off the ground, she transformed back into her old ugly self and snarled. Oh my God. Just because I can't fly doesn't mean that I won't catch you on the next island. <laughs> Just don't go to the next she island. She keeps saying about, like, oh, just because I can't fly. Just because you I can't it. catch you, you doesn't mean fly. I won't catch you. Uh, but she did. She turned into a bird th th yeah, earlier. Yeah, she, she did. So that rule doesn't exist either. <laughs> There's no rules in this. Uh, hearing this had scared me. Just because she couldn't fly didn't... Didn't mean that she could. He's just reiterating what she said. Oh my God. Just because she couldn't fly, it didn't mean that she couldn't swim or walk herself right over to the next island and wait for us. As well, I don't think she could get there faster than you. As we continued to fly higher, I noticed something heading right for us. It was a. It was small at first, but kept increasing in size as it got closer. Well, that's usually what happens when you approach something. From a distance, it looked like some sort of small black and gold bird. But black when it, and gold. <laughs> black and gold is a weird combination. It's a very weird combination. But when it got closer, the bird turned out to be much larger than Edgar. Before I could even warn Hayward or Emily about the bird approaching us, it attacked Edgar with its humongous sharp. How would they not see it? You're looking the same direction that they are. They didn't see it? Edgar attacked back with his beak, causing Hayward and Emily to fall off his back and to catch onto the rope that it was that I was attached to. I managed to catch Emily by her jacket. Oh, shit. He's going to pull that shit off. Uh... While she reached out her hand to grab hold of Hayward's. Soon, another bird joined in and began to attack Edgar with its claws. I knew this I knew this was a bad idea to bring Edgar out into the open like this, cried Emily. Hayward quickly reached for his knife and began to cut the rope. Are you nuts, I yelled as the rope began to loosen around Edgar's foot. We'll be bird food if we don't. He's just going to let the bird die, Hayward assured. When the rope came loose, we fell through the sky, causing me to lose track of Emily, Hayward, and even Lewis. He's going to lose them again. Uh, it was just me, alone in a crowd of dark clouds. I only hoped that when I hit bottom, there would be a body of water to catch me. I don't think he would survive regardless. Uh, I don't remember much besides the pain that my body experienced when I hit the ground. How did he survive? God. When I opened my eyes and looked at the dark and foggy path, I knew that I definitely wasn't anywhere near Rumble Twaza. I sat up to brush the earth from off my shirt, sensing that there was something watching me. When I stood up from the ground, I saw a sh dark shadow pass above my head, and within seconds, a net shot out from the sky and pinned, pinned me to the ground. This is the exact same fucking thing that happened last chapter. Again, is this going to happen every time they go to another island? As if things couldn't get any worse, from the bushes emerged a tribe full of savage-looking natives. They wore colorful war paint upon their hideous faces, and some even had bones to their pointy noses. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God. I'll be right back. I'm going to go get something to wipe my nose. Okay, go for it. They carried handmade weapons in their hands that looked as if they had been made from rocks and tree branches. Their clothes were animal furs of every type, complete, complete with bird feathers sticking from their waistlines. I wasn't sure how many were surrounding me, and I didn't want to look them straight in the eyes. I kept my head down and wondered what on earth, or where on earth, Emily and Hayward were. I even began to miss Lotus and his annoying personality. As they began to carry me off into the woods, my thoughts began to wander to the idea of Emily and Hayward already being dead. Uh, what if the natives got to them first? What if they scalped all three? Jesus Christ, you're, you're just jumping to scalping? If Hayward ha was scalped, was it possible for his immortality to still be true? Well, he said he couldn't die, so he's, he's going to be fine. I wasn't sure, but these terrible thoughts would not leave my mind. From the, I think Hayward's the last person you need to worry about because he said he was immortal, so he's gonna be fine. I don't even know why he's running from Zelna. He should just, he should let Zelna eat him and then just like attack her from inside her stomach. I could see the slight, the sight of the tribe getting closer and closer. They were like a herd of cannibalistic animals because of the way they jumped up and down and yelled their jargon at the top of their lungs. One of, their, one of the uglier ones threw me into a bamboo cage that was hanging high above their village and locked the door tightly. How did he throw him in, throw him in there? A few of the other ones were preparing a fire from down below, and the rest seemed to be gathering up food. It was then that I realized that I was probably the main course. Beside me, there were a few other occupied cages, and once I got a good glance at them, to my surprise, I noticed that in those cages were Emily, Hayward, and Lotus. Guys, I shouted, full of excitement. It's me! Lotus began to jump up and down in excitement while Emily and Hayward seemed to be filled with false hope. Oh, great, Emily sarcastically moaned. What's wrong? I'm here with you guys. I couldn't get my words out fast <laughs> enough. <laughs> oh, this is just foreplay between the two immortal characters. 
<laughs> oh, shit. Uh, Hayward slowly shook his head and glared at me. We thought that you that you would have been the one to save us. Now that all four of us are in cages, we have no hope of getting out. Dot, dot, dot. Hayward gulped alive. Once again, I glanced down at the tribe below and continued to watch as they jumped around and yelled like a bunch of savages. We get it. They're savages. They're tribes. They're, 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 they don't know what technology is. Uh... They had to be the scariest looking people I had ever seen with their war painted faces and their feathers that were dangling from their beard. We fucking get it. You explained this already. You already explained this. Suddenly they stopped and stood in silence as a big thin man with beads <gasps> dangling from every part. Big thin man. Oh no. Creepy thin man. That's right. She has an, an, an obsession with uh, Crispin Glover. The creepy thin man of Charlie's Angels. There you go. I know this because I she went put to him see in it with her. <laughs> oh no. Why did you do that? I don't know. With beads dangling from every part of his body, stepped into the the open. From the way the others bowed before him, I knew that they must have been, that he must have been the tribe leader. He slowly uh, passed by his tribe as he de descended towards our cages, semicolon specifically my cage. <sighs> semicolon. 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 I think this is the last chapter for me. This is the worst. It's really sad. This is this is so boring. It's it's very. It really is like the tiring. It's very tiring. I I think the first chapter is the highlight of this entire thing. Opa. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> oh man. Oh boy. Let's see. When he was standing right at the bamboo bars of my pen, he ordered one of the men from. Uh, his tribe to lower me down the man climbed the tree that my cage was hanging from and began to cut the rope that was holding mine up the cage i was in came crashing down to the sandy ground below causing the bamboo to shatter and for me to come plopping out of it wouldn't he get like stabbed by the bamboo <clears throat> if it shattered the leader grabbed my hair and looked at looked me over as his hot breath surrounded my neck oh baby oh, yeah. he gonna fuck him <laughs> He then turned towards one of his men and yelled out some sort of gibberish, causing another one of his men to bring over a leather bag semicolon. My fucking god! Why? Why so many semicolons? Oh my god. Why? <clears throat> I still feel okay. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? I got up. It was huh? fine. You got up and it was fine? I haven't gotten up yet, so we, we don't know. You might have a higher tolerance than me. She is Greek, after all. <laughs> Ugh. This is not fun to drink without Coke. It's It, it mixes so <laughs> I, well. I thought the wrong Coke there. Oof. What? <laughs> you did? I don't know if you know this, but I've never used cocaine. <laughs> no, you haven't. It's just funny when you said it like that. It's not fun without but Coke. <laughs> it's not. It's not fun without Coca-Cola, who I would Coca also appreciate a sponsor from. I do, uh, I do still, I'm still waiting on Pure Leaf, and I'm also waiting on Fiji Water. Um, guys, please, please get back to me here. I would love for you to, to sponsor this stream. Oh, man. Miss Lance or whatever? <laughs> Who the hell is Lance? Lance is, is, Pants. Is, is Lance the, the geeky guy? Is that his name? Hold on, we're going to figure this out. Mr. McGee. Mr. Mr. McGee? That was one like of those... Like McGee and me? I don't know. <laughs> that was his uh. name. But he spelled it weird. Or she spelled it weird. Uh, Apartment. Hold on. We got to figure out this guy's name real quick. Oh, Jerry Greenstein. <laughs> Jerry Greenstein. That was Jerry with a G. He's probably a lawyer or an accountant. Sounds like it. Jerry Greenstein. Who is Lance? <laughs> Kendo, where'd she come up with the Lance? Unless there was a character named Lance in this, too, that I just don't remember. Maybe you have a better memory than me. I don't oh. remember a Lance at all. I don't remember a Lance, either. I know you knew a Lance in high school. I did. We called him Lance the Pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, Christ. Where did I leave off? Sorry, everybody. I'm, tr I'm trying here. I'm trying my hardest. Uh, the maps, the golden spyglasses, my mother's list, the ropes, and the two blizzard lizard heads. The leader stood there for a few moments, looking down at the contents before picking up my mother's God, list. This is like a boring Kingdom Hearts. 
What do you mean? Just by going to island to island and <laughs> trying to collect things. <laughs> I like that you, just, you thought of, of Kingdom Hearts specifically. Because there's like creatures and they're collecting items. I guess. And it's just boring. Okay, let me tell you. Kingdom Hearts sucks, okay? <laughs> I tried playing the Tarzan level. I liked it before then. I couldn't figure out where I was going. <laughs> it's I had difficult. To, I had to have her help me. She couldn't <laughs> figure it out. Even though she had played the game even further. And we just gave up. That was it. I gave up. I never played it again. That's my That's review okay. of Kingdom Hearts. Uh, if anything were to happen to that list, where Multiplaza would have been <laughs> Don't for all forget eternity. the step photos, the hidden Mickeys. Oh, is that a real feature? <laughs> is I that real? I don't remember. It's been so long. Uh, <laughs> Multiplaza would be doomed for all eternity, and it was going to be my entire fault. The leader stood there looking at the list for a few moments before turning to his people and yelling out some sort, some more gibberish. I heard a loud gasp emerge from the crowd before I looked up to see their leader pulling me to my feet. Everything became silent again, and then the leader looked at me straight in the eye and pointed to the list. How did you get this list, he asked. It was very weird to hear the leader speak in broken English, <laughs> but I didn't dare stay quiet. Broken English? How, how, would he... how, how did you get this list? What, well, how would you? How do you? How would he spell. sound? I, uh, broken English. Like what's his accent oh, supposed how, to be? How do you get this list? I knew the last thing I needed to do was anger him. It's my mother's list. I blurted it out. The leader then pointed to the cages that held my friends and looked back at me once more. Do you know them? I nodded. Yes, I'm helping. Oh, I thought he actually. She actually put them. D -D no, she he, she should have. It's broken English. Yeah, she didn't even. He speaks pigeon. <laughs> She didn't even bother to, like, put a, a specific type of phonetic in there that Nothing. you could distinguish a language. Do you know them? <laughs> yes, I'm helping them get all the supplies on the list like, uh, to create a spell. The leader nodded. Yes, Zelna. Before I could even ask him about how he knew about Zelna, Hayward's, Emily's, and Lotus's cages released, causing their bodies to plop down beside me. The leader bent down to pick all of our belongings up from the sandy ground and placed them back into Hayward's leather bag. Perhaps today wasn't going to be our last day after all. Dot, dot, dot. The leader handed me the bag and stuck my mother's list into my pocket. You keep that in special place. He assured, patting my pocket a few times. Don't want to be losing that. I think you've got the right accent. I'm, I'm thinking that it's accurate. <laughs> it has to be, right? <laughs> He's a Nigerian. After a few moments of being silent, the leader clapped his hands, ordering everyone to get back to prepare the food and fire. Come on, come, it's time for celebration. He replied with a smile. Why? I asked. It's been many, many moons since we had an atwell on the island of Triland. So we got Thailand and we got Triland. You know what's funny? The place is, what was it called? Brazil, what was it? Bl 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 Blazeri, and then you've got Rumble Plaza, and then you got some stupid name you got like Trial Atwell. Trial in. What does that? It doesn't even make sense. I don't know. Atwell, she wanted Atwell to be really iconic, like Potter. I think. I think that was yeah, the I goal. I think you're right with his round glasses. As, <laughs> as the leader forced me over to the bonfire, I grabbed hold of Emily's jacket so that I wouldn't get separated from her or Hayward. Lotus, of course, jumped onto my shoulder like a little lost puppy because that's what puppies do. They jump on your shoulder. <laughs> and clung to my t-shirt or to my shirt. In the center of their village, there was a large fire surrounded by countless logs to sit on. I guess that it was where the tribe sat each night to eat dinner and, and to listen to the leader. Hayward sat down beside me, and Emily sat beside him. The leader, on the other hand, sat his jolly rumpus down <laughs> next to mine. Oh, shit. Wow. Sat right next to him. Making me more uncomfortable than I already was. <laughs> you shall be a special guest, he assured, patting me on the back with his monstrous hands. Well, you know what they say, big hand, big dick. <laughs> Once the entire tribe was seated around the fire, they began to pass around trays that were made out of tree bark. On the tr on these trays were all sorts of food, semicolon, food that I had never seen before in all my life. I don't want to drink this anymore. I'm done. I'm actually okay. I'm done. You say that. I am. You say that. It's going to catch up to you. It's going to catch up to you, babe. You trying to make fun of the poles, huh? Pat him on his jolly rumpus. <laughs> I think he's gonna be doing something else. That's Jolly Rumpus. I think, I think so he was too. checking out his Jolly Rumpus. Ugh. Oh, Yukon Jack. Why would you be so unkind? It, it does not taste bad anymore. 
As she takes a swig of water. As no, I take my purely it's just seat. Because it's it's um it's rough. hydrating. It's hydrating. Mm -hmm. Oh, I want this to be over so bad. This is not over yet. Fucking God Okay. Uh let's see here. Once the tribe, the entire tribe was seated around the fire, they began to pass around trays that were, oh no, I, I read that, food that I had never seen before in all my life. The first tray had some sort of roasted lizards placed on it, which made my stomach churn and caused me to just pass it on the Hayward. I wouldn't eat anything those barbarians offered us, <laughs> he replied, passing the tray down to Emily. I watched as Emily butted him in the shoulder and shook her head at him. Hayward, don't speak such nonsense. <laughs> Besides, you wouldn't want to get them angry, would you? Before I could even answer him for him, I was past another tray that had live spiders crawling over. Why would they eat live spiders? spiders. They would get away. Harry Potter spiders. There you go, Harry Potter. Why would they... Why, the spiders would run away. You don't want live food. You want it dead so you could eat it. Uh, this just made my stomach even sicker. And once again, I passed it to Hayward, who also <laughs> seemed to be overcome. Are we just going to go through every plate and how disgusting it is? $10 says that we're the main course. Dollars. Look, <laughs> Australian dollars. I these dollars here. Lotus hid inside the collar of my shirt and clung onto my back with his paws. They won't get me. They won't get me, he shouted. I'll fight them all. The leader then stood up and pulled my arm, signaling me to follow him. Come, I need to show you something, he said, continuing to pull me along. I hated the thought of leaving Emily alone. She's with Hayward, though, the man she loves. But I knew that this tribe meant us no harm. Lotus eventually came out of my shirt and sat there on my shoulders as we entered a white tent that was away from all the commotion. The inside of the tent was colorful with paintings and drawings. Paintings in the tent? And drawings of all sorts with animals covering the walls. And in the center there were pillows lying all about with an old wooden treasure chest placed inside them. Beside them. The last time I, the last time I saw you, you were nothing but a little baby. He said, opening the trunk. I was here before? I curiously asked. He nodded. Yes, your mother was here many, many moons ago to get koala hair for the spell. Oh, my God. It was hard to believe that I had actually been on this island before. Then again, anything was possible after what I had been through during the past couple of days. When the lid of the tree, uh, the treasure chest, <laughs> oh, my God, I'm falling apart. <laughs> treasure chest popped open. The leader reached inside and took something out before closing it again. When he placed a small object onto my hand, hand, I glanced down to see that it was a small glowing stone, no bigger than the palm of my hand. I knew Lotus's eyes were fixed on its shininess, and could see his paws reaching out to touch it, but I pulled away. This will help you with your spell you, when your mother came to this island many, many moons ago. We get it. He said many moons ago. We, he said this is the third time he's oh. saying it. Many, many moons ago, she came with two stones since she was, since we were kind and gave her the koala hair and a place to stay. She gave me this stone. I'm starting to sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> this is what happens when I drink. It shines like, just like red ruby, but now you will need more than I do. Why, why does it shine like a ruby? I asked. That's the first question I would ask too. Yeah, why, why wouldn't you? Why, why, that's why that's the most important thing. Why does it shine like a red ruby? It comes from the highest mountains of Rumbotwaza where the red lava flows. The lava drips onto the rock's smooth surface, causing it to become hollow and shiny red. It is known as the Stargosian Stone. Of course it is. Anything with a Z in. Z in at the end. Anything, anything Twazin, has a name. Twazin. Blazorian or whatever. <laughs> Fuck this book. <laughs> it will shine even brighter once it's filled with the ingredients. I placed the stone into the leather bag with all the other contents and looked back at the leader. How do you know Zelna? I asked. As soon as the leader heard the words escape my mouth, he looked away for a moment, turning back a few moments later in order to answer me. What? <laughs> oh! Come on! It was obvious that Zelna had left her mark upon him as well. Now get ready for this. Brace yourself for this. Many. Many. Many moons ago, she brought her rat upon the island when I was just a boy. She wanted us to help her destroy Wombotwaza, but my father disagreed, and so she brought fire. Everything burned to the ground, including my family's tribe. I was lucky to get out alive. Maybe they're like aboriginals. 
That's what it seems like. I mean, they're, you know? they're supposed to be by Australia. Yeah. So why help me? I question. Why wouldn't you be afraid of it happening again? And they, she rained down fire on them, but they cook on fire, so they're fine. It's fine. The leader shook his head. No. Ever since she was prevented from entering Rumbletwaza, she used all of her powers in an attempt to destroy it. She would not waste her strength destroying an island that means so little to her. I nodded and knew that the leader was right. Why would Zelna waste her time hurting the tribe of Trialand? <laughs> this is the worst name for an island. Uh, when she could... <laughs> it's Thailand, it's, but... It's, it is. It's, it's Trialand. It's the, it's the Thailand that tried. <laughs> <laughs> the little tri Thailand that tried. Power powers to harm me. You shall spend the night here on the island of, tri of Thailand, and then tomorrow you will help... I will help you to get the koala here and escape safely. Oh, God, it's almost over. Just as I nodded, I heard a loud, angry yell of, Fine! Before turning around and witnessing Hayward running away from the fire in the, into the woods, I was extremely curious as to what had angered him. And so, without hesitating, I apologized to the leader and went chasing after him. Dot, dot, dot. All right, guys, I got we got to take a break here because this is an ordeal. We're at page 164, so we are now way past the point of halfway through this book. We will read more on at a later date. This was uh, quite an ordeal. Thank you so much for, for sitting here with us and, and sitting through this mess. Uh, I will be back tomorrow. I will possibly play bad games. Okay? It's going to be good. Thank you so much for watching. And please thank my lovely wife for, for suffering and reading through it with <laughs> me. Uh, next time, I'll have her draw some scenes from this book uh more accurately because i mean these lizards aren't even the same color you know what i'm saying <laughs> i can make it look better you can make it look way better i'll make it look better have a good night i'll see you tomorrow everybody thank you so much goodbye